dispuestas a ayudarte a practicar el idioma que desees aprender. Los usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. Ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con Italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en Italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma. Inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés... Aitoki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con Aitoki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con Aitoki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de Aitoki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different pronouns in Spanish. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, y usted. All these pronouns have their own conjugations, and it's very common for beginners to mix them up. So remember this. When you start to conjugate the verbs, they have to match. The second rule is very important as well. The Spanish nouns and adjectives has to be in the same level. Let me explain you this. If you have a noun that is feminine and plural, for example, las mujeres, the adjective that you have to use right after the noun has to be feminine and plural as well. For example, las mujeres españolas. It is the same with the articles las, female and plural. We use this article because, as I say, it's female and plural. The third rule I already mentioned before and be careful, English speakers, because the adjectives in Spanish go after the noun, not before like in English. This is very common for uh, students that learn Spanish and already speak or know English. When I say it, las mujeres españolas, españolas is the adjective, and I put it after las mujeres. In English, it would be a Spanish woman, but not in Spanish. Okay. There are some occasions where the adjectives go before the nouns. That is true, but normally this use comes out at intermediate level or advanced level. So do not worry when you are a beginner. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel over here. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego! Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today I will be talking about seven Spanish words that are similar to their English counterpart. These words are also known as cognates. What a cognate is? A cognate is a word that has the same linguistic derivation that another word and it looks similar and when you pronounce it, it sounds almost the same and here I will give you seven cognates so you can use them in Spanish as well. The first one is alcohol in Spanish. Guess you know what it means because it sounds pretty similar than in English. 
That's it. Number two is conclusión. This one has a different pronunciation in Spanish, but you will understand definitely when you start learning Spanish. Number three, three, <laughs> hobby. This one is completely similar. We basically took this word from English. Hello, I'm Asko. I'm a Japanese teacher living in Bangkok, Thailand. Hola, soy Asko. Soy profesora de lengua japonesa. No soy Asko, sino Asko. Bienvenido a mi clase de japonés. Today, I introduce some basic phrases, question words, and vocabulary of which we use in our daily life. It's not at all difficult, so don't worry. Bueno. Vamos a empezar. So I introduce some vocabulary which you use today. Some words are from English, but pronunciation is a bit different. This is CD. In Japanese, CD. As we don't have pronunciation C in Japanese, we pronounce it as CD. This is camera. カード。カード。机。机。椅子。Newspaper. Shinbun. Shinbun. Business card. Meishi. Meishi. Dictionary. Zisho. Zisho. Kagu. Kagu. Umbrella. Casa. Casa. Terebi. Terebi. We use R, but in Japanese we pronounce this like L in English. So this is Terebi. Terebi. And radio is Nazio. Nazio. In Japanese we don't have D, so we pronounce like G. Nazio. Con. Con. In Spanish, H is not pronounced, but in Japanese we pronounce con. Magazine. Dashi. Dashi. Noto. Noto. There are two words already, so today let's use short version. Pasokon. Pasokon. Pasokon is abbreviation of two English words. Guess what? Pasokon. This is abbreviation of personal computer. Pasokon. Chocolate. Chocolate. Me encanta las chocolates. Kutsu. Kutsu. Next time. Next time. Wine. Wine. Next one is currency. Japanese currency is N. N. What's yen? Dollar. Dollar. Euro. Euro. The pronunciation is very different from English. Okay, let's check again from the beginning. Please repeat after me. CD. 
カメラ、車、時計、カバン、カード、机、椅子、新聞、名刺、辞書、鍵、テレビラジオ本雑誌ノートパソコンチョコレート靴、ネクタイ、ワイン、カンフル、円、ドル、ユーロ。あ、Thank you for the message.Hello, everyone.Okay, next name of country in Japanese. 日本、スペイン。In Japanese, we don't have double consonant, so it's not SP, but SUP, スペイン。フランス。As we don't have double consonant, this is not FR, but FUR. And L is pronounced like L in English. フランス。イギリス。This part is not from English, but from German. ドイツ。スイス。イタリア。アメリカ。This word is not from English. We originally have Japanese word for this country. 中国 My、okay. next language. Language. My language is the, uh, Konnichiwa Japanese. La lengua japonesa. Ne Japon is Nihon. Nihon. Nihon is country. Language. Japanese language is Nihongo. Nihongo. Country's name plus O. Language. Nihongo. Chugoku. China is Chugoku. Chinese language is Chugoku. Chugoku. Espana. Spain. Espana or Spain. Entonces, la idioma de la española o la la tengo. Tengo de. Ay, bonjour. Francugo. Francugo. Chao. Italiago. Sawati. Taigo. I'm in Thailand. Taigo. I love this alphabet. It's so cute. Ay, then how about English? English. Not アメリカ語、not イギリス語。instead we say 英語、英語、irregular、ね。はい、残念。Okay, then let's learn grammar. Let's first target grammar is エステラムネント、こちら。
and look at this. The apple is parasite. Parasite. She said this. This. In Japanese, this. Kore. Kore. And look. The apple is king size. She says, not kore. But, kore. Kore. Not my side, your side. Kore. Right, uh, next. Airport is far from both of two. Are. Are. Okay. All right, now let's check again. My side. Kore. Your side. Kore. Far from both of us. Are. Right, so look at. Uh, picture number one. The camera is parasite. So she said, This is a camera. This is a camera. This kore. Like this is camera. Camera and camera in Japanese. Camera. And look at this. This is a camera. X or camera. Y. X kore ne Y camera X wa Y desu Kore wa camera desu Kore wa camera desu okay. The number two Car is far from both of us So we say are are Car is kuruma in Japanese Car is kuruma so Let's make a sentence That is a car are wa kuruma desu. Are wa kuruma desu. Now look at number three. The clock is his side. Not my side. Kore. Kore. Clock is koke in Japanese. Koke. Koke. The sentence is sore wa Okay, look at number four. Which one? Number four. Okay. Let's make sentence. Use this word. Sentence is. これはカードです。これはカードです。Right, number five。あれ。ね。あれは机です。あれは机です。Number six。Newspaper is新聞。これは新聞です。これは新聞です。Number seven, business card. 名詞。名詞。それは名詞です。それは名詞です。Number eight, that. あれ。ね。チェア。つ。つ。あれは。つです。ナンバー9。ディショ。ファンテンテンスエス。あれは。ディショで。
ามที่เห็นเนี่ยค่ะอะไรเนี่ยอะไรวะนี่เดบิวโบแมวเฮ้ยเด็กอะไรเด็กเนี่ยตาตีตาตีขาบังขาบังอาจจะเป็นอะไรこれはカバンです。これはカバンです。でね、ですね、ネガティブセンテンス。じゃあ、ルケットナンバーワン。This is not a radio.This is not a radio. This is not a radio. radio はラジオ。ラジオ。This is not a radio. ネガティブフォームです。これはラジオじゃありません。じゃありません。negative form of this very different, but it's a negative form of this. This isn't the radio. これはラジオじゃありません。Okay. Number two, that isn't bus. That isn't a bus. Bus, bus, bus in Japanese. That isn't a bus. あれはバスじゃありません。あれはあくじゃありません。Number three, that is not a camera. That is not a camera. これはカメラじゃありません。これはカメラじゃありません。Okay, this is negative form. Okay, next. じゃあ、question. Number one again. Is this a camera? Is this a camera? question はこれはカメラです。かこれはカメラですか ?Just add か in the end of the sentence.An intonation is up. これはカメラですか ?Cover number two. Is that a car? Is that a car? Car is 車。車。あれは車ですかあれは車ですか Number three, is that a clock? これは時計ですかこれは時計ですか okay. And let's check the answer. Now, if I ask for number one, これはカメラですかこれはカメラですか ?Number five is yes, okay. Yes, はい。はい。はい。カメラです。これはカメラですかはい。カメラです。ね。If I ask, これはラジオですかこれはラジオですか ?Answer is no. 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 いいえ。いいえ。In Japanese. And negative form. いいえ。これはラジオじゃありません。これはラジオじゃありません。カメラです。But normally in the answer we omit to repeat the omit the subject. We don't say subject again. So just いいえ、ラジオじゃありません。カメラです。Yeah. Okay, let's check the answer again. Yes. はい、カメラです。はい、カメラです。Or はい。そうです。It's okay. Yeah. はい、そうです。This so is like so in English. Very similar. Yes, that's right. はい、そうです。And when the answer is no, いいえ、ラジオじゃありません。Or, いいえ、違います。違いますね。That's wrong.、Mm. That's wrong. いいえ、違います。Both are. So, when I ask, これはカメラですか ?Answer is, はい、カメラです。Or, はい、そうです。If I ask, これはラジオですか ?Then answer is, いいえ、ラジオじゃありません。カメラです。Or, いいえ、違います。カメラです。
生前ナンバー2。あれは車ですかあれは車ですかアンサーです。はい、車です。はい、そうです。ナンバースリー。それはカメラですかあっち、アンサー。それはカメラですかいいえ、カメラじゃありません。or, いいえ、違います。OK です。ナンバー4これはカードですかこれはカードですかバッチアンサー。なんかえはい、カードです。or, はい、そうです。ナンバーファイブ。あれは、椅子ですかあれは、椅子ですかいいえ、椅子じゃありません。机です。ナンバーシックス。これは、本ですかこれは、本ですか本ミスク。これは、本ですかいいえ、本じゃありません。い,いえ、本じゃありません。おい,いえ、違います。見て新聞です。ナンバーセブン。これは、名刺ですかこれは、名刺ですか名刺、聞きますかはい。はい。そうです。はい、そうです。おはい、名刺です。ナンバーエイト。あれは、椅子ですかあれは、椅子ですかはい、椅子です。おはい、そうです。ナンバーナイン。これは、雑誌ですかこれは、雑誌ですかいいえ、雑誌じゃありません。辞書です。いいえ、雑誌じゃありません。辞書です。辞書。辞書です。ナンバーテン。これは、ペンですかこれは、ペンですかいいえ、ペンじゃありません。鍵です。あれはテレビですかはい、テレビです。おはい、そうです。そうこれはカバンですかはい、そうです。おはい、カバンです。Then look at number one again. これはカメラですかラジオですか時計ですか ?I don't know.I want to ask what is?What is? What is? Hmm? これはカメラですか時計ですかラジオですか ?I don't know. これは何ですか何ですか何ですか何 is question word? これは何ですか ?The answer is カメラです。カメラです。これは何ですかカメラです。The number two, what's that? What's that? that. あれは何ですかあれは何ですか The answer is 車です。Number three. それは何ですか The answer is 時計です。Number four. 
これは何ですかサードで。I just please make a question.Number five.What's that?What's for?So what's that? あれあれあれあれは何ですかあれは何ですか机です。How about number six? What's the question? Question は、これは何ですか ?And answer is, 新聞です。Number seven, what's the question? これは何ですか ?And answer is, 名詞です。Number eight, that. Question is, あれは何ですか椅子です。椅子です。No.9。これは何ですか以上です。No.10。これは何ですか鍵です。No.11。あれは何ですかテレビです。ラッカーン。これこれあれガーシー。これは何ですかアンアンサーです。ガーシー。カバンです。カバンです。OK。はい。じゃあ、ね。うんはい。じゃあ、ルケットナンバーワン。はい。ナンバーワン、これは何ですか鍵、鍵、キー、鍵、これは鍵です。佐藤さん、キー。佐藤さん、キー。佐藤さん、オーナーの鍵。これは、佐藤さんの鍵です。佐藤さん、サンミス、ミスター、ミスです。え、ビューティフォースメン、エンドメン。佐藤さんの鍵です。オーナーの鍵です。And how about number two? It's Suzuki is Suzuki san. Suzuki san is owner of this dictionary. This dictionary is Jisho. これは Suzuki san の Jisho です。Number three. Tanaka san is owner of this CD. In Japanese, CD, not CD, CD. これは、田中さんの CD です。Okay, then please make a sentence about number four. Owner is Ito さん。Book is Tom. これは、Ito さんの本です。Number five. Card. Card is card. カードの役目。発生なクラスのことを。これは、高橋さんのカードです。7つ。これは、ミラーさんの本です。7つ。7つ。7つ。山田さんの雑誌です。No.8 ノートスエンスタッフノートノートこれは小川さんのノートです。No.9 ディクショナリー Do you remember ディクショナリーこれは中田さんの辞書です。Look at number one again. これは鍵です。佐藤さんの鍵ですか鈴木さんの鍵ですか田中さんの鍵ですか I don't know. I want to ask. What's the question? 佐藤さんの鍵ですか鈴木さんの鍵ですか田中さんの鍵ですか I don't know the owner. Question mark is, 
誰の、なお、誰の、なお。そう。そしてこれは、誰の恥ですか誰の恥ですか ?and answer is, 佐藤さんの恥です。佐藤さんの恥です。And please repeat the question and answer. これは誰の恥ですか佐藤さんの恥です。And how about number two? Dictionary. Question and これは誰の辞書ですか鈴木さんの辞書です。ナンバー3、フィッチリエス。これは誰の CD ですか田中さんの CD です。ね、これは誰の鍵ですか佐藤さんの鍵です。これは誰の辞書ですか鈴木さんの辞書です。We already know what we are talking about when we answer. So, we can omit the noun when we answer. For example, number one. これは誰の鍵ですか ?An answer can be 佐藤さんのです。佐藤さんのです。佐藤さんの鍵です。You don't need to repeat. Now. Okay, then、uh, let's think about short, short answer. Number two. これは誰の辞書ですか The answer is 鈴木さんのです。鈴木さんのです。ここ鈴木さんの辞書です。It's okay, but more simple. 鈴木さんのです。はい、じゃあ number three. これは誰の CD ですか ?Short answer is 田中さんのです。Okay. Now I ask you questions. Number four. これは誰の本ですか ?Answer is 伊藤さんのです。お、これは誰のカードですか高橋さんのです。これは誰の本ですか皆さんのです。Okay. Then, next page. Look at number seven. 山田さん。これは雑誌です。雑誌。雑誌。山田さん。これは雑誌です。And the theme of this magazine is camera. カメラ。カメラです。これはカメラの雑誌です。カメラの雑誌です。カテゴリー、コンテンツのナウンです。Then how about number eight? これはノートですね。ノート。ノート。ノート。What's the content? German. German is ドイツ語。ドイツ語。Country is German, Deutsch. And language is Deutsch. Go. これは Deutsch 語のノートです。Number nine. Chinese dictionary. Chinese dictionary. China is 中国語 And Chinese language is 中国語 So Chinese dictionary is 中国語の辞書です。中国語の辞書です。これは中国語の辞書です。じゃあ、again, number one. これはカテゴリーコンテンツのナウンです。何がコンテンツ ?car is 車。car is 車。And he is Kagi in Japan. Korewa Kuruma no Kagi de. Korewa k 
ブルーマーの感じで。ナンバーチュー。イングリッシュです。英語。英語。そうなんですね。これは英語の辞書です。Number three, ¿qué es la lengua española? スペイン語、スペイン語。これはスペイン語の主流です。Number four, French. French. French language is フランス語、フランス語。これはフランス語の本です。Number five, bank. Bank is 銀行,銀行 in Japanese. これは銀行のカードです。Number six, ah, this is a book for Japanese language. Japanese language is 日本語,日本語これは日本語の本です。これは日本語の本。これは雑誌です。うん、車の雑誌ですかファッションの雑誌ですかカメラの雑誌ですかパソコンの雑誌ですか ?I don't know.、So、I want to ask the content of this magazine. これは何の雑誌ですかこれは何の雑誌ですか ?An answer is カメラの雑誌です。Okay, then please repeat after this question and answer. これは何の雑誌ですかカメラの雑誌です。Okay, then えー、let's think about the question for this. What's the content of this note? これは何のノートですか ?German. Answer is ドイツ語のノートです。ドイツ語のノートです。Number nine. This is not a question. これは何の辞書ですかこれは何の辞書ですか ?answer is 中国語の辞書です。中国語の辞書です。p e r s o n A On the left side, ask a question. Person B on the right side. What's that? What's that? So, this thing is person B's side. So, A sounds this, this one.、So、question one is, Nan desuka? Kore wa nan desuka? An answer is, CD desu. CD desu. Then, second question. 何の CD ですか何の CD ですか The answer is English. English. 英語の CD です。So, let's practice the conversation. Please repeat after me. これは何ですか ?CD です。何の CD ですか英語の CD です。OK, next. The first question is saying, これは何ですか ?The answer is, カードです。Second question, 何のカードですか ?The answer is, 病院のカードです。病院のカードです。はい、next。そうです。なんか、その。first question。これは何ですか。
出しです。出し、出し、出しです。セカンド最初。何の出しですか車の出しです。そしてラストアンス。これは何ですか本です。何の本ですかパソコンの本です。あ、ちょっと。もう一度ですね。はい。じゃあ、ルキャッツナンバーワン。ウォッチは日本語で。OK。OK です。これは OK です。Look at the front. 成功。この手成功成功はフランス、フランスですね。これは成功の時計です。これは成功の時計です。フランスのナウンで。How about number two? プラダ。Japanese pronunciation is プラダ。プラダ。これはプラダのカバンです。これはプラダのカバンです。ナンバースリー。コンピューター。コンピューターはパソコン。パソコン。パーソナルコンピューター。パソコン。これはソニーのパソコンです。ね、成功プラダ、ソニー。はブランドですね。ナンバーフォー is not brand. It's country of origin. Maybe China. But we can use the same sentence pattern. これは中国の傘です。中国の傘です。How about number five? これはサムスンのテレビです。これはサムスンのテレビです。アバーナンバー6これはキャノンのカメラです。ナンバー7 is not brand, it's country of origin. ブランスです。ブランスです。ブランスです。これはあ、sorry, not brand. スイス、スイス。はい。これはスイスのチョコレートです。スイスのチョコレートです。喜ぶね。はい、ナンバーエイト。フランス、フランス。これはフランスのワインです。はい。で、ジャケットナンバーナイン。これは、うん、バーバリーのネクタイですか。ポール・スミスのネクタイですかグッチのネクタイですか ?I don't know, so I want to ask.Question.Brand country, I don't know, I want to ask. どこの noun? どこ is question word to ask brand or country of origin? これはどこのネクタイですかこれはどこのネクタイですか ?And answer is バーバリーのネクタイです。Okay. Then please make a sentence to ask the country of origin of this shirt. Shirt is 靴 in Japanese. Shirt is 靴、靴。靴これはどこの靴ですかこれはどこの靴ですか ?Answer is イタリアの靴です。イタリアの靴です。はい。じゃあ、Please ask the brand of number 11. Here is i t s in Japanese. t s i t s i t s これはどこの椅子ですか
pregunta es, ¿qué ano dice de ¿Qué ano dice de Last one, 12. Ask the brand. ¿Cuál es el nombre de la marca? ¿Cuál es el nombre de Toyota no kuruma de Toyota no kuruma. Okay. Right. In this case, we can omit the noun when we answer. Kore wa doko no kuruma desu ka? Toyota no de. Toyota no de. Voice that noun. Okay. Then, eh, the answer in short, short version. Number one. Kore wa doko no toke desu ka? Keiko no desu. Number two, これはどこのカバンですか Short answer is, プラダのです。プラダのです。We can't wait for now. Okay. Right, じゃあ、next. The next star is number. In Japanese, number. Hi, Japan, from zero. Every afternoon. Zero is from English. Zero. Ichi. Ni. San. Yon. Go. Roku. Nana. Hachi. Q. Ju. Q. Ju. Long power. Long power. Q, Ju. And 11 is Ju. And 1, Ju, 1, Ju, 1. Then how about 12? Ju, 2, Ju, 2, Ju, 3, Ju, 4, Ju, 4. By the 20 is 2, Ju, 2, Ju, 2, Ju. Then how about 30? 30, what? 3, Ju, 3, Ju. Now, we have 37, 37, 37, this is a two-digit number. Next, three-digit number, there are some irregular. 100 is 100, 200, 200, 200, 300 is not tan taku, tan change, tan biaku, b, tan biaku. 400 is not irregular, yon taku, o taku, and 600 is irregular, lo kyaku, not lo ku hyaku, lo kyaku. 700 is not irregular, nana hyaku. 800 is irregular again. It's similar to 800. 800. One of my students said, Oh, here is happy here. Happy. Nice one. Okay, 900 is not irregular. So, three digit number 300, 600, 800 are irregular. Next, thousand. One thousand is ten. Ten. Me ten. But not ten. Ten. Zen. Ten. 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 And 8,000 is irregular, not 8,000, but 8,000, 9,000, 9,000, 3 and 8 are irregular. Yes. We don't have 10,000, 10,000, no. Man, man is unit of four zero. Chiman, Niman, Tamman, and this is good news. 
no irregular for month. One month, 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 one はい、じゃあ、レッツリーディ。ファースト、レッツリー。234。234万。234万。これ、you then how about this one? Can we read in Japanese? First, read these three numbers, like 987. And month, month, 987. And read the rest. 6500. ドンジュタン。ね。はい、ストリート。はい、さ、ヘッド、ストリート。プライス、プライス、ストリート。はい、ルテ、ナンバーワン。日本のカレン。ね、日本のカレン。ノッキエンバック。エン。三万八千六百円三万八千六百円。おそれとめんにレギュラー。八千八千イレギュラー。六百イレギュラー。三万八千六百円です。はい、じゃあこのカバンは千三百ユーロ。ユーロ。はい。じゃあ、ナンバー3。このカフォコンは10万9400円。で、10万9400円。ナンバー4。あら、ゴール。この傘は4ドルです。はい、ナンバー5。テレビ。このテレビは8万5700円です。この画面は 7万6300円。3300円。はい、7チョコレートは8ドル。8ドル。ワインは3000円。100円で3000円。レギュラーですね。100円。ネクタイ。ネクタイは2万9000円。500円。靴は640円。ナンバーレブン、実は九十二ドルです。皆さん、車は、うん、六百七十、レディスリーナ、六百七十万円です。はい、じゃあ、next question。うん、how old is number one？how old is 
this watch? How old is this watch? この時計は、question mark in いくらですかいくらですかいくら question mark and a か question この時計はいくらですか and answer is 3万8600円えはい、じゃあ ask the price of this bag this bag このカバンこのカバンこのカバンはいくらですかこのカバンはいくらですか ?Answer is 1300ユーロです。1300ユーロです。パソコン、パソコン。このパソコンはいくらですか ?10 万9400円。この傘はいくらですかこの傘はいくらですか ?Can you answer?Answer is 4ドル。ドル。Okay, let's practice a little bit longer conversation.、Um, first one, A on the right side,、uh, left, left side, one, two, five, camera. ね。はい。He's asking, これは、oh, country of origin. これはどこのカメラですかこれはどこのカメラですか ?And answer is、What's、this? 日本のです。日本のです。How much? いくらですかいくらですか ?Can you read this number? 二万三千。100円です。はい、じゃあ、let's、uh, practice from the beginning. And、uh, let's add the phrase, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me in Japanese. すみません、すみません。When we want to ask something.、Hmm? はい、じゃあ、let's see. すみません。これはどこのカメラですかほんのです。いくらですか ?2 万3600円です。少し、ここ、can answer 日本のカメラです。少し、can お見つかな。日本のです。はい、look at number one. My first question. これは、どこのネクタイネクタイこれはどこのネクタイですかイタリアのです。How much? いくらですかいくらですか ?7300 円です。300円です、ね。はい、じゃあ、プレゼント。すみません。これはどこのネクタイですかイタリアのです。いくらですか ?7300 円です。で、ね。これは、どこの時計,時計。これは、どこの時計ですかこれは、どこの時計ですかスイスの。ね、はい、じゃあ、すみません。これはどこの時計ですかスイスのです。いくらですか ?1 万8800円。だって、ラスファン、スピードアフターミー。すみません。これはどこのパソコンですかアメリカのです。い
いくらですかもう、マジなの。17万8千円です。Okay, good job. That's all for today. Thank you for joining my class. If you want to study with me further, visit the website of i t o k i and try my lesson. Muchas gracias por venirte、eh, a mi clase de japonés. Si quieres estudiar más conmigo, visita la página web i t o k i y prueba mi clase. Muchas gracias. Espero que nos veamos pronto. Adiós. s a y o n a r a Individual. Of course, it's the same word, just different pronunciation. The next one, number five, is piercing. Yes, we use this word with the same pronunciation and meaning. Next one, number six, is informal. I like to use this one in my lessons to explain ways to greet and say goodbye because it's similar in English. And is a word that the students understand very quickly. And the last are some words related to sports. If you're learning Spanish and you like sports, you're lucky because most of the words are cognates like football, tennis, baseball, volleyball, hockey, water polo, golf, surf, and so on. As you can see, almost all sports are cognates. So, Talking about your hobbies should not be difficult. As you can see, there are many, and I would like to remember you that there are hundreds of cognates, and if you check them, you can be ready to your first Spanish lesson. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the i t a l k i YouTube channel for more tips on learning Spanish. Take a lesson with me on i t a l k i c o m by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi, everyone, it's Caroline here, and I teach English on italki. Today, I am going to be talking about business idioms or idioms you might hear in your office or in your workplace. A student asked me a really good question the other day. He asked me whether, because I'm an, a native English speaker, do I know every single idiom? And the answer is no. Idioms are phrases or expressions that come from a particular place or a particular age group. So idioms are different in the UK to idioms in the United States. I have chosen five business idioms to talk to you about today, and you may hear them in an office in the UK or in the States. So, hopefully, they will be super useful for you. Idiom number one is the big picture. Imagine you go into a meeting and your boss says to you, You've lost sight of the big picture. What does that mean? That means that you are thinking too much about the small details of the project. And you are so interested in those little details that you don't remember what it is you're trying to achieve. So always keep sight of the big picture. The second idiom is to go the extra mile. Now imagine you're in an interview and the interviewer says to you that they are looking for someone who always goes the extra mile. What does that mean? Does it mean they want you to run around the office every day? No. It means they want you to do more than just what is in the job description. They want you to go that little bit further and to take on extra responsibilities. That is 
going the extra mile. The third idiom is a win-win situation. A win-win situation means everybody gains something. A really good example of this is these videos that I'm making for italki. Italki gains some content for their website, some lessons for their learners, and I have a platform where students can see me and book lessons with me. It's a win-win. Italki wins and Caroline wins. The fourth idiom is word of mouth. So an example of this is think about how you found out about Italki. Did you find Italki by searching on Google? Or did you find Italki because one of your friends recommended it to you? Recommendations from friends are word of mouth. It can be positive or it can be negative. If your company gets bad word of mouth, it is going to be a very difficult time for your company because people really listen to the opinions of their friends. So make sure whatever you do, <laughs> you have good word of mouth about it. The fifth and final business idiom is to touch base. My manager used to say this to me a lot. To touch base means to have a very quick and short meeting about a project or something that you are working on. It might only be five minutes of your time, but in that time, you will check that your understanding of the project is the same as your manager's understanding of the project. So I have a challenge for you. In your next lesson, I want you to ask your teacher if you can touch base about what you have learned in your lesson so far. This could be five minutes at the end of the lesson where you review all of the different subjects that you have been studying. You're touching base about the things you have covered so far. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to italki by clicking somewhere. <laughs> And you can take a lesson with me by clicking on my teacher profile in the description box. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Welcome back to the Stop Being Boring When Speaking English video series. When speaking to native English speakers, it's useful to use a variety of vocabulary to make your conversation sound more interesting and flow. Why not spice up your language a little bit and impress others with your speaking abilities? In this next video, we will take a look at some American and British slang. Number one, American. John Hancock. John Hancock. Mm -hmm. So that's a person. It's a name of a person, yes. And it's American slang. Mm -hmm. What do you think it means? Um, I just got John Hancock. Does it mean I'm wasted? Certainly not. Give, give me an example. Okay. So, can I please have your John Hancock at the bottom of this paper? Come on, you gotta get it now. Is it your signature? Yes! You got it! That was easy! Okay, awesome. Number one, British. Peak. What does peak mean? Like, uh, take a peak. No, that's, that's Sorry, that's not taking a peak. That, that's not smack. This is taking a well, that's just like taking a peak, that's not slang. Oh. Like in a slang like peak. Like the peak of a mountain? That's not slang, that's actually yeah, a Yeah, that is the peak of a mountain. I don't know, tell me. Okay, let me give you an example. So, say you go out, you go out one night, and you lose your purse, your keys. Is it like phone. the most horrible situation you can be in? Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, that's so peak. You'd be like, oh, so, yeah. How was your night? It was so peak. I just got fired. That's so peak. Exactly. So it's like the peak of badness, I guess. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. So the peak. Two, American. Jacked. Jacked. Does, Jacked. That, does that mean like hench? What does hench mean? Like say you go to the gym. Don't answer back with the slang part. <laughs> <laughs> so the British equivalent of jacked would be hench, I think. Okay. So if someone's like really ripped. Yes, exactly. Okay. Go to the gym, work out a lot. Whoa, look at him, he's so jacked. We would say hench. Number two, British. Peng. 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 P-E-N-G. Peng. Like someone being hanged on the head with something? Or? <laughs> just like, you know, peng. Peng. It's similar, right? I don't know. I guess it's a little similar. Um, no. Give me an example. Uh, okay, so for example, so you're eating a cake, it's delicious, you'd say, oh, this is peng. 
just be delicious. Mm, you could use it in other contact texts as well. Like it's hot, you know? Yeah, but I could also say that your eyes are pink. Oh. Or a person is pink. Just mean like extraordinarily awesome. Basically. Right. If you if you're talking about a person, you might even say painting. Painting. Like he's a painting. Okay. This is mostly so like he's like a ten. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So like the like the top of the top. Yeah, basically. Number three, American. I blew it. I blew it. I blew it. What a nightmare. I blew it. Yeah. So that means that you've completely ruined the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Say so like I didn't make it into didn't make it into school. So my parents will not be proud of me. I blew it. Yeah, but you locked up late to work. Don't really ever do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never late. <laughs> Number three, British. Having a mare. Having a mare. Having a mare. A nightmare. Like horrible real nightmare in realistic in reality. Very good. Okay. That's exactly that it. That's a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd go Having a mare. You were having a mare before. I was having a mare before. Yeah. Not understanding anything she was saying. Yeah, exactly. So there you have it. There's our British and American slang. Tell us what you thought of it. Did you understand it? And we'll see you next time. My name is Vũ Nguyễn. Tên tôi là Vũ Nguyễn. It's really amazing thing for me. From other key, I can meet people around the world and they can give me more energy to live. live and more inspiration to live in the world also. Very magical. <laughs> yeah. when, uh, when I can go on lesson and I feel that uh, I'm doing a very good job and then working at home with a very wonderful team. Uh, I think that I can do something and, uh, and I, I'm doing something here. I think that I can uh, say idea and talk with people. That is the first motivation for me to come here. The second thing that I can have some money for my life to make my life become better and uh, more comfortable. It's very wonderful website of Adaki because Adaki is the connection between the every people in the world with each other. There are many purposes for us to learn a new language. Innovation is the most important, not only study language, but also share an idea and culture and everything else in the life. And through the learning and, uh, and teaching, and uh, we can share more ideas and we can share our life better. You know, you know that because each person have uh, their own experience and their own knowledge and their own way of living. And when we meet the new people and we think that we are we are discovering a new universe or a new area or something like that. <laughs> so it's wonderful that we have this diversity and we should just learn from each other. But if you at least just learn a second language and expose yourself to a second culture, not only do you understand that culture better, but you understand your own culture better. And if most people just did that and were talking openly and honestly about themselves and other people. I don't think there would be any diversity problems. Because we're all learning from each other. He's a very good student. He studied very well and he just learned for, you know, he just only studied for one month, but now he can speak very much with me. Later on, yeah, the student and the teacher can meet in, uh, in a different country and then uh, the relationship be, become very good. We drink coffee together and we uh, go uh, and I ride a motorbike and I take them uh, along uh, somewhere beautiful together and we uh, talk together and then they come back to their country 
and we become teaching students again. We study again. Yeah. Hello, good morning, buenos dias para todos. This is Adriel here, tuned in again on italki.com slash I stay at home. And uh, today um, I'm going to be returning with some new business topics starting this week, uh, going in into next week. There'll be a few times where they'll be repeated for people that couldn't make it to one of the sessions. Um, as you may have heard, uh, as someone who lives in France, I'm still living under lockdown. Uh, it's going on. It's been extended until the 11th of May. So uh, hopefully for you uh, who is watching here today, you'll maybe be able to go outside around the same time we do. <laughs> I'm not sure yet, but I'm glad for you for being able to tune in today with us. So I'm just checking here. I have some live comments here. Camila is back. Good morning, Camila. And Good morning, Lucia, once again. And uh, anyone on the landing page? Um, I have a few people already on YouTube uh, saying hello, and I kind of just want to make sure you're all here before we begin. Um, again, it's going to be a little bit more business today, but I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, does anyone else tuned in right now on the website? You can say hello if you have not already. You can say hello again. Yes. I have, okay, I have uh, Javier from Spain. Yes, um, everybody's pretty much from Spain on this <laughs> on this live stream. Uh, but uh, if you're from somewhere else, I did have someone from, uh, from Colombia yesterday and uh, I had someone living in Croatia. Um, anyone on the landing page? I only see YouTube people right now. Anyone watching on italki.com slash I stay at home? You, you you don't have to be shy. You can say hello. <laughs> it's the one thing <laughs> you say today. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I, well, I'm not sure if I see if anyone else, but um, let's see. Well, I don't see anyone else, but, but uh, if you're coming in, uh, we'll begin. Okay, so today we're going to do something that is uh, one of my favorite things to teach uh, in my classes. It's something that's about... Uh, presenting and interviewing. So uh, again, presenting and interviewing. These are these are two things that to me they seem separate. Yes, they're they're kind of separate ideas, but to me they're connected in some way. I mean, the, the idea of presenting and interviewing are things that um, you may have to do one day in English for your job or in your in your personal life, in your professional life, you may have to do it in English. You may have to do it in a different language. Maybe you're learning French or learning Chinese and you'll have to learn how to do that. But um, in this case, I'm going to give tips on uh, presenting in English. So again, for those of you who are here with us today, just tuned in, presenting and interviewing. Again, it's an inter it's an overview. So I'm gonna start talking about an introduction. Again, the there's a quote for you. The success of your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, by what, but by what the listener receives. Okay, this is by Lily Walters. Um, do you agree with this quote? What does Walters mean? Again, this is a little bit more, um, I would say, advanced vocabulary, right? But I think the thing that's going to be interesting is to think about what, what does, what does uh, Lily Walters mean in this quote? Again, your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, by, but what the listener receives. I uh, have Elena uh, Revia from Spain. Uh, good to see you today. Um, I don't have anyone commenting on the, lie, on the landing page um, I don't know where you are today. <laughs> say hello, say hola, say buenos dias. If you're here, um, if you're not, then well, I hope you show up soon. <laughs> so, uh, so, so just, uh, just to sort of tune in, I have one uh, comment here from Javier saying, yes, I agree. 
And yeah, and again, why do you agree? What 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 does Walters mean with this quote? Your presentation will be judged not by the knowledge you send, but by what the listener receives. Yeah? Okay, everybody agrees. Okay, we have a few people that agrees. Okay, we have Robert from Valencia. Good to see you. And no one on the landing page. <laughs> so I think everybody's on YouTube today. Um, so, um, yeah. Well, again, the knowledge you send, right? So, again, remember, we think we think of a presentation a lot like a phone call, right, or a conversation. There's the person that sends the information, and there's the person that receives the information. Sending, receiving, receiving. And the idea is, is it doesn't matter how much you know in your presentation. This is this is the truth. It's good to know a lot of things, but it's very important to express things clearly confidently you know if people walk away from your presentation and think oh wow this this person really knows things it might not even be because of their knowledge it might be because they were a person that was easy to listen to or they were very welcoming yeah so i so i have uh isa from from Zaragoza. good to see you and says i agree with this quote and javier says it's important uh, the, the message that you communicate to the listener. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's important. Remember, the presentation, it's not you. It's the listener, really. It's you have to, and to be a good speaker, you have to also be a good listener, right? You have to think about what do you enjoy as a listener. So um, how often do you give presentations at work? Do you enjoy them? How do you present yourself at work? Um, outside of work right is it is it something that you do that you do often um again this is there's no right or wrong answer i just want to kind of know you know how do you present yourself um often people well, people tell themselves you know i'm a very shy person or i'm a person that's very timid right these these are words that we learn um as early adjectives in english and um yeah it's Presenting yourself is important. Um, when you're learning a language, especially, presenting yourself is more important than your knowledge of the language. Yeah, yeah. I have I have students that they are not a very high level of English, but they are so confident and so cool with their English that we we have great conversations, you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, in the end, it doesn't matter if they have a low level they're able to communicate and that's great you know um so i have a, i have a few uh, everybody's agreeing with the quote um elena says not only knowledge is enough it's it's important to be able to transmit it yeah exactly the ability to transmit yeah that's an important thing we're going to talk about and uh, robert says i don't usually have presentations just once in a once in a blue moon yeah that's a <laughs> that's a good phrase I, I i like that expression a lot it means you know basically almost never right um so yeah again presenting is something we do uh whether it's in at work outside of work um in our personal life in our professional life we are presenting ourselves to others so we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the in the conversation and i'm going to show you this here again um presenting right comes to some of us naturally right we say naturally it's the same way we would say it in spanish right something that is natural it's easy to you right many of us do not like presenting for various reasons which reasons um why why are there some reasons that people do not like presenting can you give me some reasons that presenting is something that scares people or terrifies people which which reasons yeah. Do people not like presenting? <laughs> All right. I'm waiting for your comments here. There is, I am not getting anyone on the landing page today. Are you here? Are you on italki.com slash I stay at home? <laughs> Say hello if you are here. <laughs> if not, um, I think everybody's on YouTube today. So um, yeah, so that's uh, good. So um, yeah. All right. So Camila's just saying again, I agree with Walters because the, it's the first impression 
we that yeah the first impression that matters with other people yeah i would say that the first impressions are very important yeah if you come into a presentation you're going um uh you know it's like that there's already a problem right it's only three seconds and there's already a problem so we need to make sure that we can somehow uh as we say in english overcome right overcome our problems right we go we 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 sort of improve our problems um i have a comment here from from zlatina uh most of us are shy yeah that's what people say most most of us are shy yeah okay yeah we say that yeah uh, veer says talk in front of people and 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 being the center yeah talking in front of people and being the center of attention yeah that's that's something that does scare a lot of people yeah um it's difficult to talk in front of people that we usually don't know that's from robert uh, i would say that um that 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 i think that's natural right if we don't know someone we 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 feel that we can't be ourselves right we can't be natural um from elena she says because we are shy and we feel scared we feel scared remember scary is the noun scared is the adjective um to talk in front of an audience uh yeah uh, shyness sometimes it's strange from angels okay that's good and Luth and luthia says because some people are so shy yeah so these are everybody agrees this is the main reason well here's a funny thing um do you know uh, the, the percentage? Uh, so, so I, I'm from the United States, and do you know what the percentage is of people that are afraid that their biggest fear is 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 speaking in public? Do, do you know? Uh, do you know uh, what the percentage is? Is it thirty percent, fifty, ninety? <laughs> what is the percentage of people? That is uh, that their biggest fear. I mean, the thing they're most scared of is speaking in public. D do you have a hmm, percentage? Uh, maybe you you can tell me, but it's okay. Um, again, if you don't know, um, I will I will give you the answer. Uh, just seeing a few other comments here. The, uh, Camilla says the main reasons that people feel uncomfortable is with is with people they don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Javier says the problem is is I have no f fluency right fluency in conversation in English to the present. So Javier says ninety percent. Robert says 70, 75 from Isa Elena. Okay, you guys are way high. <laughs> it's actually twenty five, but it's but it but it, it's it's uh, this is this is something that uh, twenty five of people that responded to this survey right. And again, the fear is called glossophobia, right? Right, phobos, right? Being phobos in Greek means fear of uh, or fear, and glossos is it means to speak, right? So it's fear of speaking, right? So acrophobia, the fear of heights, ranked second. Fear of the dark, ranked ten. So why do you think this is? <laughs> we already talked about it, because right. So again, this is a just a, a chart here showing percentage of Americans that say they fear public speaking, you can see it's 25%. So this is more than heights, more than bugs, snakes, other animals, drowning, blood, <laughs> flying, zombies, clowns. Yeah, there's a lot of things that people are afraid of. But, but people are more afraid of speaking in public than they are of zombies, or they are of, you know, strangers, right? Or uh, as we say, claustrophobia. Interesting, right? I mean, you would think that um, y some other fears would be more common, right? Maybe, maybe people would be more afraid of heights and uh, than than they than they would be of speaking. But actually, public speaking is something that really scares people, and scares people more than heights. It scares people more than drowning. It scares people more than dying. Like, <laughs> why are people more scared of speaking in public than? these things can can anyone answer this for me on the chat uh any 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 reason why you think people are scared of speaking over you know to me things that are pretty scary like well i mean i don't know snakes snakes can be scary i, I guess <laughs> I don't. so um does anyone know why this is so high up on the list
Do you have a? Do you have? Do you have any any comment? Do you think this 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 chart is funny? It's kind of funny, but it's it's actually true. It's not a joke. <laughs> um. Yeah. What? Why? Okay. All right. So I've got a few. So um. So so. Camila says, overall, when we are speaking in a second language, yeah, that's that's good. That's a good sentence, yeah. Insecurity, right? Not dominating the language or topic, yeah. Insecurity is something that scares people a lot. I think I think it's very scary to not feel like you're you, right? You're, you. When I speak another language, I feel like I'm another version of myself, another, you know, and and I think that it's normal when we present to feel scared because we don't feel like we are, you know, who we are, right? So um, Elena says it's because we are afraid to fail, but it's an irrational fear, I think. Well, yeah, it's irrational, but I don't think it's it's a problem that it's irrational. I think it's, but I think that it's something you can overcome. I think that fear of heights, fear of, you know, claustrophobia, that's more difficult to overcome. But I think fear of speaking is something we can overcome, I think. But I don't know. Maybe you can disagree with me. Uh, Robert says, I think it's because we feel like if the rest of people are judging us or something like that. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Isa says, we don't like that all the people are focusing on us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, these are some, these are some good reasons. I think we're, we're getting some good, uh, some good comments here. Um, I'm just reloading the landing page to see if I'm getting some other comments uh, from you. But um, I think today we're having some connection problems. Uh, so I apologize if I haven't gotten to your comments quicker than I should. But uh, but but you'll you'll have time to answer. So here we go. All right, so here we go. So I have some people who are commenting on the landing page, yeah? So um, they haven't confidence in the topic from Pedro and lack of self-confidence. Okay, good. So I think I got you, but there's uh, some loading problems. I think the servers are overloaded in France today. Um, so presenting, let's go to it. Location, location, you know, have you ever given presentations in any of the following situations? Did they go as planned? Did they go wrong? So again, here's some different places that you might have presented, an informal presentation to friends or colleagues, a presentation at a conference, a presentation to clients and customers, speech at an event, wedding, retirement party. So have you ever had to present in a, a place like this before? Uh, can you... Hmm. Yeah. Can you please, uh, yeah, tell me if you, any stories that you presented, you had to present? It, because you see, it's not just um, at work that we present. Maybe we present to family, we present to friends, we present, uh, right, ourselves <laughs> when we, we have a new job. Um, I have a few comments here from uh, Zlatina. Uh, she says, I think the main reason is because people are afraid of being wrong, being wrong, right? And Camila says, also, we grew up with an education model where we believe making mistakes is wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I think these are these are things that we say they're internalized, right? They're things that come from from within us, right? And when we are talking about um, presenting, we have to remember that. All of us have presented maybe once, maybe twice, and it's not something that makes people very comfortable. So, uh, again, uh, do you have any 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 stories where you have presented before uh, an informal presentation, a formal presentation? Yeah, do you have any stories that you would like to share with me? Again, you don't you don't have to be shy. You can you can share it in uh, in the comments on the landing page, also on YouTube. Um, I'm going to keep us going here, but again, what are some important things to do in order to present well? Like, what are things that are absolutely important to do in order to present well? Give me some of your your thoughts in the comments. You know, 
So yeah, so uh, Javier says, yes, I present friends and colleagues. They go as planned. Yeah, okay, that's that's good. <laughs> I would think uh, would think that that's a good thing. I have a comment here from Magda. Finally, I could get the comments to work on the landing page. Uh, it's easier if it's an informal speech as a wedding or retirement party. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, I think that's true. And why is this? Why are informal presentations, presenting friends, colleagues, easier to do than a presentation at a conference, a presentation to clients or customers? People get very nervous when they have to present to clients or customers or at a conference. Um, yeah, Luthia says, I present friends and it, and it was normal or it is normal yeah, every time. Yeah, it's normal. Mm. But has anyone presented for a conference or clients or customers? Would you like to do that? <laughs> what do you have to do, right? Yeah, so Camila points out a work interview. It's formal. Yeah, we're going to talk about interviewing later in this presentation, but interviewing is a very good example of something that is um, something that is uh, formal that you have to practice for. So I have a comment here from Pedro on the landing page. When I finished uh, university, I was in front of 300, 300 students and many teachers. I was scared it was a weird situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, just to answer the last question, I have one from Veer, speaking clearly and loudly, being friendly and polite. Yeah. And Camila says, um, you know, presenting yourself in an interview. Yeah, it is a kind of presenting. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're going to continue talking about the importance of presenting. So. I'm going to show you the next part, the do's and don'ts of presenting. Presenting terrifies people. When we say it terrifies people, right? Right. It, it, it really scares people, but like in a really strong way, it terrifies people. And presenting in a foreign language could be even worse. Yeah. Um, I know that um, I've had to present in non-native languages. I've had to present in French. I've had to present in Italian. And even though I speak Portuguese fluently, it's still a new language and it's a new way of expressing your ideas. So it's terrifying. So here's some things you can do. Be welcoming, right? You know, be be someone that, you know, people can feel happy to be with. If you're going to spend uh, an hour with someone or you're going to spend, you know, they're going to spend an hour with you or ha a half hour with you. They, they, you know, make them, you know, like you, feel comfortable being there, right? Introduce yourself, you know, don't be shy. <laughs> Confirm objectives of presentation. Remind everyone of the structure and length of presentation. Move through topics smoothly. Give people the chance to ask questions. Yeah. And uh, the don'ts. Again, worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about making mistakes. Laugh it off. Don't apologize for your level of English. Be confident and don't rush through the topics. You know, make sure your audience understood your information. Again, this is something that I see a lot. I, I, I used to uh, help people with presenting um, in English uh, in person, face to face uh, before the crisis. And uh, one thing I noticed is that everybody who presented well, they were very confident and they were very, you know, they, 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 as we say, they took their time, you know, and they made mistakes and it didn't matter. We, we didn't care. We, we, we thought it was very clear. So any other do's or don'ts that you would add to these lists? Are there any other things that you should do? Other things that you shouldn't do, you know, what's uh, give me some examples here of other do's and don'ts. Can you tell me? Yeah. Again, there's some new vocabulary here. So if you if you if you want to know what they mean, again, right, when we move through the topics, right, it means that we 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 go from topic to topic quickly and effectively, right? This is uh this is something that's very important. So hmm. 
Yeah. Anything else you would add to the do list or the don't list? Maybe that I did not put. Maybe you have some personal advice for us in the class today. Is this a complete list? Is it a <laughs> is it a good list? Something that you you would say that uh, nothing to add, as we say in English. Hmm. Well, I'll wait for your comments, but I would like to hear more advice you might have. Maybe you have advice for me or advice for someone. Um, okay, so Pedro, good. He's answering over here on the landing page. It is recommended not to read. Yeah. I would say that is a big thing. Um, one thing that can be terrible, um, and this is something I try to do when I'm presenting to you, this uh, PowerPoint presentation, I don't try to read every single word. The idea is that I also bring my conversation to the presentation, right? I bring my own language, my own words. So I think, yeah, what's one thing you don't want to look like is that you're reading from a piece of paper the entire time, right? If you do that, uh, uh, you know it's <laughs> it, it doesn't look like you prepared your presentation, right? It just looks like you wrote it and then you're reading it and then you go away. And that's not a presentation. A presentation, you're presenting you, really. I mean, it sounds like yes, maybe you're presenting something for someone or your job, but you're the you're the star. <laughs> you're the person that is making people interested in what you're talking about and also interested in you. So um, I have a bunch of comments now coming in from YouTube. So uh, Zlatina says, don't be nervous. Um, Javier says, use uh, corporal language. Now you can say body language, body language, right? Like, like what I'm doing right now, we see body language, right? To explain. Um, Robert says, uh, it's challenging to introduce yourself in a foreign language, but sometimes you are so focused uh, on the speech the grammar, pronunciation, etc. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's when we worry about making mistakes, right? We're thinking too much about, oh, I made a mistake, and then you stop. Don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Never do that. You make a mistake, it's okay. You know, you can even you you don't even have to talk about your English. Think about it this way: imagine that you're presenting in front of people. They're not English speakers either, so what they want to know is. You know, what are you presenting? Is it interesting? You know, like, why are you presenting it, right? Um, Camila says, lose the brain after uh, after making up. You can say also, like, you lose your your train of thought. Like, use your lose your thoughts, right? Um, after making a mistake and completely losing, uh, well, like, sort of maybe make, you would say, you could even say, um, uh, having... You say lose the presentation. We can also say maybe uh, having the presentation, we say, fall through, right? Or the presentation sort of just fall apart, right? We, we don't want that, right? Um, Robert says that you, you have to forget your shyness and your fears. Yeah, you have to kind of go it as, as if it's kind of a <laughs> something that you don't have any fear. And Isa says, uh, do look to people. If it's one person, look in the eyes. Yeah, make eye contact. Eye contact's a good good advice. And there's a lot of people look to where the people are. Yeah, don't look up. Don't look down. Don't look at your, you know, look, look at the people. You're talking to people. You're not talking to um, a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I am, but, you know, I'm talking really to you. Um I have also a few comments here from the landing page from uh, Borja saying the slide uh, uh, show presentation should show understandable phrases and catch the audience's attention. Yeah, uh, yeah, it should catch their attention. It should, it should, it should, it should, it should sort of you know make them interested. Yeah, that's that's good. These are all these are great things to add to the list. Um, and one more from Zlatina is a do practice before. The speech alone or in front of friends? Yes, always practice in front of someone or alone. Because if you never do it, you, you think about it. Is it something that you find interesting? If you present it, are you interested in it? Are you having trouble explaining your ideas? Are you feeling um, maybe not very confident? If 
this is something you can do to improve your, your abilities. So let's look at a little bit of functional language with presenting. So when pre presenting, it's important to be yourself. Be yourself. I want to see you, the person. I, I don't want to see the PowerPoint presentation and then just a person talking. I don't want to see a person that's going like this and not talking. I want to see someone that is being themselves. So in the end, what makes a good presenter? Well, there's different things. A professional appearance. Good eye contact, someone said that, so yes. Enthusiastic attitude, body language. We also have someone that said body language. What else makes a good presenter? Presenting the, to others is the basis of presenting yourself. So what else makes a good presenter? What are some other things that you should think about? So I have a, a, a anonymous Enderman saying, hello, I am fluent in English. Okay, well. Good to have you on the show today. So if you are fluent in English, then you can participate in the conversation today. So yeah, just maybe answering, what are some other things that make a good presenter? Hmm, okay. So Elena says you must check before uh, the devices you're going to use. Okay, so <laughs> you could be uh, te te technologically savvy, right? You know, smart about technology. That would be something that's a good idea. Um, what else? Um, what's, an, what's another thing that makes a good presenter? Let's see. Another good presenter. Yeah, what, what 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 are some other things maybe again that makes someone a good presenter? Can you think of good presenters in history? People that are good at presenting themselves, making speeches, right? Talking. Yeah. Can you can you tell me other things that you would add to this list? Mm-hmm. -hmm. Well, you can, you can, we might have, we might have said already everything we need to say, but let's see. All right. So I have one from Pedro saying, it's interesting that the presenter can explain with examples and experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So someone who may be, uh, is, uh, we say in English, someone who is approachable. I'm going to write that here. Approachable personable, right? If there's someone that's approachable or personable, it means that they have the ability to share human experiences, to, to feel like you're, you're listening to a person speak, not just uh, someone who's like a business person or, you know, someone that is, you know, very technical, you know, someone who really has a, a human, human knowledge, right? So um, from, from Borja, I have a comment says a skillful presenter has to be self-confident, convincing, and funny. Ah, yes. A good sense of humor. Now that is something that's very good. You need to have someone that um, at the very least is someone that's enthusiastic, is happy to be presenting for you. You know, I, I try my best to be enthusiastic for you on this uh, for this presentation. But at the same time, you know, the idea is that when you show enthusiasm for something that you're presenting, it it, it always works because if you like it, you make other people like it, right? They're there to learn, to enjoy what you're teaching them about, right? This is this is important. So um, Robert says, uh, I think a good presenter makes the audience feel close to him or her, yeah? And Zlatina says, connecting with people, uh, drawing attention. Remember, also using the gerund. Um, Camila asks, what do you mean by good eye contact? Uh, when I keep the eye with the audience. Well, um, yeah, that's what it means. It means when you're, it's it's what, I had a comment earlier from someone, it was uh, from Isa, right? Uh, if it's one person, look to the eyes. If it's a lot of people, look where the people are, right? Because you want to, you want to feel like it's a human experience, that you're having a conversation with someone. And that's really what it is. You're in the end. We're we're not really presenting so much as we're just having a conversation with people about something 
we know about or something we are excited about, right? And that's that's why what I say it's important to be yourself because yes, you should be pre- you should be professional, you should you should plan, you should check your audio and, you know, practice, but but in the end if you're yourself, you don't have to worry about all these things. If you're yourself, people like you. It's true. People are there for you, you know. So uh, Elena says, when time flies, the presenter engages the audience. He must adapt his speech to listeners. Yeah, that's another thing that's important. Know your audience. You're with a type of audience and they're enjoying your pace or they feel like you, they're sort of not responding. Maybe go faster, go slower, you know. Imagine you planned a speech that was, I, I recently had to do a presentation the presentation they told me it was going to be a uh, it was going to be a twenty minute presentation, but then the day of the presentation they said you have twenty five minutes to present. Twenty five minutes. I thought, oh my god, it's a I have five extra minutes, and I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but imagine if you planned word for word your presentation in twenty minutes, and you have to add five minutes. That's crazy. That's that's a fourth of your original presentation. That's twenty five percent. So, so what did I do? I added experiences. I added anecdotes. I added information that I already knew, and I went slower. You know, and it was better. You know, I wasn't stressed. I wasn't looking at the clock the entire time, and it went by like that. You know, it was very fast. So that's the thing that's important: adapting your speech. I think that's a very good advice. And Pedro says, not too formal. People have to enjoy the presentation. Yeah. And and again, it's what we say in English. Know your audience, right? Who is your audience, right? Are they, you know, are they people in business, like corporate business? Are they people that are freelancers? Are they people that are, I don't know, artists or people that are in sort of a specific kind of industry? Show them something they like and do it in a way that they like. But again, be yourself, right? This is important. And if you happen to be a formal person, then be a formal person. You know, don't be an informal person if that's not your style. Some people can be, I mean, there are like professional business people, scientists that they they pick on an informal style style, and it works. There are others that do a formal style and it works too. It really depends who you are as a person, right? So again, uh, we went through that. So interviewing, right? Uh, we're going to do, we're going to go to the next part. And this is, uh, again, a quick review because we have about... Um, just about a little less than 25 minutes. So we're going to look at this together, the idea of interviewing and why it's important. So mastering our ability to present helps us gain business and professional opportunities. Now, what are the best ways to prepare for interviews? Have you ever given a potential employee an interview? We call them a candidate, right? Um, have you done a lot of interviews in your life? Have you given interviews to people? Are you a manager? Um, uh, please share your experiences either on the YouTube page or on the landing page, italki.com slash I stay at home. So you can, uh, you can share your information with me. Let me know. Um, is is preparing for an interview very similar to preparing for uh, a presentation? Are they very different? Hmm. What are the differences and similarities? What is the connection we're making today? Who would like to comment <laughs> on the comments today? So. Um, I do have a comment here that came in from Zlatina talking about make it fun, right? Not not have it fun, but make it fun and make people, uh, or you can also say involve people with questions, right? You can have people participate. Um, So, and Magda says, you know, be clear, introduce uh, examples, uh, ask audience some questions to catch their attention. Yeah, so yeah, these are these are again some a few extra answers that I'm getting from the um, being a good presenter. But let's talk a little bit about interviewing. So interviewing 
is pretty connected with uh, with presenting. But what uh, I need to know is is again, is it very different from presenting? Is interviewing very similar? Again, this is something that we do need to know. You you never know if you're going to have to do an interview in English. Maybe you have. So you could tell me the best way to prepare for an interview or if you've ever given someone an interview, like you could also share that experience. There, there are things to know, right? Again, so the, the best way to prepare for interviews and what are you most scared of doing interviews or giving presentations? Again, what is, um, what is something you're more scared of? Are you more scared of interviews or are you more scared of presentations? Hmm. Can you tell me? You more scared of uh, interviews or presentations? What what is more um, difficult for you? If you're commenting, you can say hello if you're still with me. Um, you can tell me your opinion and why. Um, but uh, why don't we... Uh, okay, good. So I, got, I finally have a comment coming in from Javier saying interview. Okay, so interview, and you can explain why. Okay, Isa says both. Camila says both. Okay. <laughs> both are... So everybody is kind of scared of both. Okay, now they're very similar. But I would say that there's a, a key difference in how you can, uh, I would say in interviewing, you can also be yourself. But there are a few things we have to think about. And there are how we answer the questions, right? The questions are the hard part of an interview. And a lot of times it's the same question. But let's think about questions that are inappropriate, appropriate. Or strange, right? There's some. There's some ones. Uh, Robert here is saying, "I'm more scared of interviews because you don't know what they are going uh, going to ask you, right? And in a presentation, you uh, you have everything pre prepared, or you should have everything prepared. Yeah, well, you can prepare for an interview, but the the problem, of course, is that you can't. Um, again, it's what Robert says. You you don't know." What, what they're going to ask you, right? Yeah. And Elena says, I think you feel bad in the interview because you look for a job. Well, <laughs> there's sort of the, the confidence problems, right, that you're having. But, um, but I think, uh, again, let's think about some of these questions, right? Tell us your strengths and your weaknesses. What's your proudest achievement? Can you give us your best friend's phone number? Are you prepared to work long hours? If you were an animal, <laughs> what kind of animal would you be? Now, these are all true interview questions. Uh, and, and true interview, um, maybe the first one isn't so much. It is a question. It's just that they're asking for inc information. So it's more of an inquiry, right? So you can make a question without necessarily using a question mark. So... Um, so I have a I have a comment here from Camila saying that the first one is your impression to achieve a professional goal, and the second one depends of the context and of course the audience could be scary. Well, I mean you could also be scared of the audience. I would say that it's more you're scared of the audience than the audience being scary. <laughs> but looking at the uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Uh, Think about some uh, some ways that we answer some of these questions. Uh, can you can you tell me, for example, uh, what are some ways to answer the questions? I'm not sure. Um, I think we have uh, the question from Camilo. Okay, good. It's gone. <laughs> Blocking the questions. Uh, 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 here, I wanted to know how do you answer some of these questions? Again, remember we're presenting ourselves. One of the big questions we have is tell us your strengths and your weaknesses. This is a big one. It's very important. So how do you answer this one? 
what is the what is the best the best answer? Is there a correct way to answer this question? All right, so I have a few people answering here. Camila says, I hate that the questions during work interview, but your goals and personal things. Yeah, everybody does. These are these are the terrible questions, but 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 they're important. Imagine you're someone that gives an interview, or you um, are the the interview e, right? You're the person being interviewed, and you have to. These questions, what they're trying to do is they're trying to help people understand who you are, right? Like, how do you make decisions? How do you overcome problems, right? One, there are many jobs that require you to be confident, right? Um, jobs that you need to, you need to really, you need to be confident. You need to know what you're doing, and these questions, you know, it, it's not a problem if the job is not for you, right? I mean, again, I think it's important to work somewhere where you feel like you can, you can be yourself. I love teaching. Teaching is a job I love. And when I interview for teaching jobs, I feel like I can be myself. And the only thing I need to know is, is to answer, you know, the very important professional questions, right? And have anecdotes, right? Um, anecdotes, stories. So I have a few comments here. Uh, Veer is saying appropriate is question one or two. Yeah. Inappropriate, question three or four. And strange is question five. Yeah. I would say that these uh, that the last three questions are very strange, um, but definitely inappropriate. Um, the last one's strange, but you might be you might be asked this question. I once had a person ask me a question in a job interview. Tell us a joke. A joke? Like I think, how many? I, mean, I don't know what a joke. I mean, like, to me, to me, and the you know, the, and I don't even know if it's an appropriate joke, right? I mean, I I might tell a joke that might offend someone. It's not not because it's an offensive joke, but they might find it. I don't know. Maybe they don't like the joke. They find it offensive. That's not good. I I'm not the kind of person to tell a joke. So so I told a funny story, a funny work story, and that was uh, good. People were were laughing, but. But again, yeah, there, there. The, a lot of these questions are, are are very strange, and there are stranger questions than these. Um, and um, uh, again, uh, Camila says it's the best answers to be yourself, but not tell specific details. It, it's more to show your skills and your preferred work style. Yeah, I would say that that's a that's a good reason. Um, Pedro says it depends if you were looking for a job from one year ago, maybe you will be nervous. So so you mean looking for a job for a year? Like you like you 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 spend a year looking for a job and you 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 don't have the job? Well yeah I mean one thing that can be difficult is if you do a lot of interviews and you don't get the job, right? Now you start to think maybe it's you, but I don't think it's that's true because because I I started to realize that if 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 I interview for jobs that are jobs that are related to my work experience and related to my interest, I will find people with a common interest. And they will ask questions, we will answer, and we will hopefully uh, enjoy each other, right? So when I started to interview for jobs that were more uh, for me, you know, my personal interest, I started to realize that I had uh, less trouble answering the questions because I could be myself. I could. I, I did a lot of um, corporate job interviews, and they're very difficult because they ask all kinds of questions that are from the from the book, right? And, and these questions are terrible. I mean, they're 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 absolutely terrible. There, there's just no there's no reason for them, right? <laughs> so, so again, I I kind of. Kind of uh, want to want to just mention that because if you're having trouble with uh, with an interview, it might not be you. It might just be the actual job. It might be the place. So again, these are these are a few things to think about when you're interviewing. Interviewing is part of presenting. So uh, remember, uh, it, it it's about being yourself. It's about telling a story. And if you can do it in another language, then you'll be fine. Um, Let's look at this here. Um, we can we can prepare the best we can and still have problems with the interview. So here's two big ways we can reduce problems. 
First is be humble. Never upsell yourself if you don't have to, right? Upsell. When we say upsell, what does that mean? What's the what's the definition of upsell? What does it mean to upsell? Yeah. Pedro's saying here the most important thing is to enjoy and to love your job. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that's really important. Um, what does it mean to upsell yourself? Again, when you use the right kind of language, you say, I'm not sure, but I'm afraid I don't have much experience. However, right, what, what does it mean when you upsell yourself or you upsell something? What, what is that upsell? So it's a word we use sometimes in business. Upsell. What what do you think that means? Upsell. It's, it's sort of a sort of a strange word, right? It's a yeah, yeah. So I'm getting a comment here. Yeah, it's like to sell, right? Right. I have a comment here from the YouTube page. Again, there's a little bit of a delay, and it's and from from Elena to sell up uh, yourself and. Mirna is saying, "I need a person who talks to me in, in English." Okay, but uh, when we're when we're um, but what we're what we're doing here is we're talking about right um, practicing together uh, with interviewing. So yeah, when you upsell yourself, right? It, it's like you're selling yourself too hard. Like you're selling yourself like like this is your level, and you're selling yourself at this level. That's not a bad thing, but remember. If you're going into a kind of a job and industry and maybe you don't have the experience, it's okay to say, I don't have much experience. When I got my first teaching job, I had no, almost no experience. Yeah, don't lie. That's what Zlatina says. Don't lie. Um, and it's okay because you have your resume, your CV, right? And you also have your, your interview. Um, so this is an opportunity to show that you are you are in this because you're interested in this. This is something that you want to get better at. And that, and it really depends, right? Because the problem was, uh, I was in California before, and there was a problem in California where everybody, no one wanted to train anyone. They wanted people with experience. So all the jobs had two years experience, three years experience, 10 years experience. And I couldn't, I couldn't interview for these jobs because they wanted people with experience. So the idea was to get experience, you have to go into what's called an entry level job, entry level. It's when you have no uh, experience and you then maybe later you can get those jobs. So it really depends. Know what you're interviewing for, right? If you're interviewing for something that you have zero experience, well, it really depends how you sell yourself, right? Um, if you say, for example, I used to work in sales, so I have people skills, people skills. So I can do teaching or I can do consulting. Okay, that's true. Even if you didn't do consulting or teaching or something before, you have people skills. So that's something you have that maybe other candidates, they don't even have, right? So yeah, it's what Camila says. In this case, increase my level. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. And um, here, uh, again, another thing that's really important is to be a good listener. So repeat information and ask them to repeat questions for you. So example, could you please rephrase the question? Um, as you mentioned earlier, I think it's very interesting that, yeah, this is a way to show also that you're interested in what they're interested in. So don't be like thinking in your head, we, we, you know, we, uh, ah, this interview is going so well and I'm going to get the job. Part of interviewing and presenting is also listening. It's responding to your audience. Your interviewer is your audience. It's true. It's not the other way around. Some interviewers are very aggressive, and I, I don't think what they do is right. But but I think that a lot of them, they just want you to present yourself, really. That's all. Present yourself as if you were a client in their business or you were someone that wanted to do business with them. And all of a sudden, it works, right? So, so um, 
So here uh, I, I'm getting, a, so I'm not getting a comments, but I kind of wanted to know if you had other things you wanted to, other ways you wanted to reduce problems. So other ways you want to reduce problems. How do you do that in an interview? How do we reduce interview problems? <laughs> I know that many of us can have interview problems. It's something that that happens to all of us. So what is a, what is an interview problem? Um, that another one maybe that's not mentioned here. It can be similar to a presentation problem, but it's an interview problem. What's something else we have to be, we have to do something we have to do to solve or reduce problems in interviews? Anyone? Anyone want to answer here to this question? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Okay, we were talking about reducing problems with being shy, right? Be polite. Good. That's from Zlatina. Be polite. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I, I like that. Yeah, be polite. Be respectful, right? Um, yeah, remember, this is someone that you're going to work with. You know, don't be arrogant or aggressive. You know, even if you're, like, really good at this job and you're going to be amazing, you know, be humble. Be polite. It's very important. Any other ways we can reduce problems in interviews? Maybe some personal things you can share with your fellow viewers on the chat. Yeah. Don't lie about your experience and skills from Javier. Yeah, good. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Um, again, this goes back to upselling, right? Don't don't down, don't like downplay your experience right we say don't don't be like you know way at the bottom but kind of be at this level where you know you're showing that you have experience and you can do this job and again if you apply for the right jobs for you all it takes is a good presentation it also takes someone who's also a nice guy or a nice a nice a nice a nice uh a nice person let's just say that a nice person and but at the same time you know it's it can be difficult you know interviewing can be a difficult thing uh Pedro says on the landing page tell the truth yeah so again all really good things yeah let's close it here so again presenting and interviewing are only part of the are only part of the most important thing selling yourself again we didn't just say be yourself we said sell yourself right this is a, a difficult thing to do for many people if you find ways in your language to make yourself interesting you will easily hold people's attention right so part of improving your business language or your english in general involves taking risks if presenting scares you Give it a try and see what you can learn from it. So this means, for example, imagine that, you know, you have an opportunity to present something. You know, do it, you know, find a way. Imagine you want to present a, a topic to a friend. Let's say, let's say, for example, you're really enthusiastic about something and your friend, this is true now with the, with the crisis. We have plenty of time to just talk to each other on the internet. You could practice this in English. Describe something you like. Describe why you like it. Talk about your history, and you know it's 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 a good thing, right? Um, again, uh, we have uh, we we have like uh, people saying. Uh, I have Camila saying when questions that you don't feel confident. Maybe it's best to be humble and honest. And uh, Elena says nowadays photos or videos hold load up on social media and maybe represent a problem. Well, yeah, they maybe represent a problem, but one thing that we can think about is that even if they represent a problem, you know, they shouldn't um, stop you from trying this, right? I mean, I think one one way to practice your English that's amazing is to present or present yourself. So. So in my classes, in classes with with many teachers online and also face to face uh, before the crisis, um, they're there to help you and to and to help sort of monitor the situation to see how you're doing. So, so again, just to close that uh, up uh, for you, the, uh, my name is Adriel. I'm a professional instructor on italki.com. and uh, I wanted to thank you for your answers today and listening to a topic. Uh, talking about uh, presenting yourself and also 
uh, presenting to others and interviewing. So uh, if you're interested uh, in, in having a class with me, this is my link below uh, on the video. And uh, again, uh, there are also many other amazing professional teachers on italki. There are informal tutors, there are language partners if you just wanna have someone to chat with, talk with. And there are lots of teaching resources and teaching materials that will help you improve your uh, skills and reach your goals in learning English. So again, thanks to everybody who's watching today. Thank you for tuning in on this uh, fine Tuesday morning. And uh, for, for all of us who are here at home, I wish you plenty of good wishes, plenty of good health during the COVID-19 crisis. And I'll be back on Thursday to present more. So again, stay tuned. There's plenty of teachers coming up today and the rest of this week. And uh, I wish you the best and um, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you very much. The number of refugees worldwide has reached historic levels as tens of millions of people seek asylum from conflicts in their home countries. Even for those able to reach countries willing to take them in, rebuilding their lives and careers in unfamiliar societies often proves challenging. For one group of refugees living in Istanbul, teaching online Arabic lessons to students across the world has offered a way to overcome these obstacles and establish new hope. As well as earning income, they have been able to share their experiences with people from different cultures and backgrounds, cultivating meaningful relationships with students. My name is Rahaf and I'm from Latakia, Syria. Previously, I had a normal but busy life. My name is Abdullah and I'm a Syrian guy from Homs, the capital of funny jokes. Hello, my, my name is Amr. Uh, I'm an Arabic teacher on italki. Uh, I'm from Egypt. Hi, I'm Hossam. I'm from Syria, Al Haseka, and I'm a teacher on Italki now. Three years ago, I came to Turkey to Istanbul. Many challenges uh, came in one time. Leaving a country is not, or leaving your home. This is one. It's like fish out of the group. I mean, yeah, my, the challenge that my career is almost dead. This is the only challenge now. Online teaching, yeah, it, it solves this problem, of course, because you can just be wherever and get online and start your class. What Italki offered me is like new students I have never met from another continent, way far from me. Once they want to like learn my language, I feel like this is like, I feel sometimes emotional. Italki, Bessa College and NGO Small Projects Istanbul are working together on this project. You know, it's important for people to kind of see um, and get to know someone who's experiencing a difficult time or who um, has had a, a difficult past and to um, just remember people are people are people. We need to remember that, um, you know, we're, we have a shared humanity and I think that gets lost a lot in the media or in the news. I'm teaching Arabic for first year students of Arabic in America. Um, we both enjoy teaching and learning online. Uh, it's an amazing experience for me as a teacher. I find it so helpful for me, also for the students. Going into it, people might like, like have these assumptions that you're supposed to like learn something about refugees or like understand something new. But I think it's like most valuable to realize that like you're not really learning anything new, other than that like this is like just, a, just another person just like you my tutor mohammed was like so nice and so willing to work with my level of speaking and comprehension at the beginning teaching online was a new experience for me and it had a, a lot of challenges but now i'm used to it and honestly i am enjoying teaching arabic on italki i care now i care more 
I care more about the language, I care more about my students. Teaching Arabic is something valuable for me. Maybe give me hope or I feel gain hope. I, it's reward for me. Hi, I'm a language learning app. Can we move on? This is a dog. I don't have a dog. Repeat after me. This person eats bread. I want to practice English for my job interview. Shh. Incorrect. You haven't reached this lesson yet. Now repeat after me. This person eats bread. Fine. This person eats bread. That's better. Moving on. ¿Cansado de aplicaciones de idiomas inflexibles? Usa italki para aprender como tú quieras aprender y estudiar cualquier idioma con nativos. Meet Peter. He is learning Chinese. He was studying on his own with textbooks, flashcards and apps, but is still having problems with basic conversation. This is Maria. She loves learning English, but she doesn't have many opportunities to use it. With italki, Peter and Maria are able to get personal online lessons to help them become fluent in a foreign language. You can start learning a language on italki today. Just follow these three simple steps. 1. Select the language. English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Japanese. Italki has teachers for every language. 2. Select the teacher. With italki, you can choose from thousands of experienced teachers from all over the world. And three, schedule a lesson. Online language lessons are the next best thing to living in a foreign country. With italki, you'll have a personal language teacher and real conversations with native speakers. Every day, thousands of people are connecting to international teachers through italki. Find a teacher today and become fluent in a foreign language. Hi, my name is Tom. I'm from the US. I'm a chemical engineer and I'm passionate about language learning. I've used italki to learn eight languages to a conversational level. I grew up in Colorado where I was exposed to many different cultures which cultivated my interest in languages. One of the first languages I became conversational in was Norwegian. I decided to book a trip to Norway. To prepare, I found a group class with around seven people. Not only were they extremely expensive, it was around $40 to $50 per lesson, Progress was also frustratingly slow due to the size of the class. I heard about italki from a positive view from a famous polyglot. I was amazed to discover that I could learn any language I want, one-on-one, -on -one, and for the fraction of the price as offline classes. How is this even possible? I immediately signed up with two teachers in Norwegian. One teacher, we would have conversation lessons and go through a textbook, and with the other teacher, we would go through worksheets and chat about random things. So, essentially, I structured the classes in a way that would suit my own learning style, which never would have happened without Ritaki. Within a year, I was relatively fluent in Norwegian. I was so happy that I could actually go to the country and use the language in a practical setting. And the best part is that I really enjoyed the learning process. I thought, why stop there? I picked up Italian and mixed my interest in Italian cooking with lessons on italki. After learning Italian for a year and going to Northern Italy, I was able to easily get around and communicate with people. I then decided to set myself a personal goal of passing an advanced Italian exam and my teacher on italki helped me to achieve this. I was hooked. I'd found the ultimate formula for learning a language from scratch and staying motivated. I would book a holiday in a new country in one year's time so that I could put the language into practice. I did the same with Japanese, French, German, Russian, Czech, and Hungarian, and even explored Chinese, Thai, Serbian, Farsi, and Sicilian. From this process, I made so many valuable friendships and connections that has improved not only my communication, but also my confidence.
Whether I'm watching the news in German, reading about Italian politics, speaking to my cats in Norwegian, on the phone to my friends in Bergen, or watching fitness and nutrition videos in Czech, I find a way to get at least some practice of one of the languages every day. I found the best way to stay motivated is to align my interests with my language learning, and in that way it doesn't take over my whole life, which people often believe. I find this way of learning on italki so much fun. Lindy es una aplicación móvil que ayuda a practicar idiomas de manera instantánea conectando a usuarios disponibles en todo el mundo. Con Lindy encontrarás personas nativas dispuestas a ayudarte a practicar el idioma que desees aprender. Los usuarios con tiempo libre se mostrarán disponibles para recibir llamadas y de esta forma ganarán recompensas ayudando a otros usuarios. Así es como conectamos personas de forma colaborativa y gratuita en nuestra aplicación. Únete a nuestra comunidad, haz nuevos amigos y mejora en todos los idiomas que quieras. Descarga Lingvi y practiquemos juntos. Este es Peter. Está aprendiendo chino. Ha intentado estudiar por su cuenta con libros, tarjetas de vocabulario y aplicaciones móviles, pero sigue teniendo problemas para hablar. Esta es María. Le encanta aprender inglés, pero no tiene oportunidades para ponerlo en práctica. Con Italki, Peter y María pueden recibir clases personales online para hablar con fluidez en otro idioma. Tú también puedes aprender un idioma en Italki. Empieza hoy en tres simples pasos. Primero, elige un idioma. Inglés, alemán, chino, francés, japonés... Italki tiene profesores para cualquier idioma. Segundo, escoge un profesor. Con Italki puedes escoger entre miles de profesores con experiencia de todo el mundo. Tercero, elige el horario de tu lección. Las clases de idiomas online son el mejor método para aprender con profesores nativos. Con Italki tendrás un profesor de idiomas personal y conversaciones reales con hablantes nativos. Cada día miles de personas aprenden con profesores internacionales a través de Italki. Encuentra un profesor hoy y domina el idioma de tu lección. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com and today we will be talking about three grammar rules to follow when you start learning Spanish. The first one is that as you have already heard, Spanish verbs are always conjugated. That means that they have to match with the subject of the sentence. For example, there are different pronouns in Spanish. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, y usted. All these pronouns have their own conjugations, and it's very common for beginners to mix them up. So remember this. When you start to conjugate the verbs, they have to match. The second rule is very important as well. The Spanish nouns and adjectives has to be in the same level. Let me explain you this. If you have a noun that is feminine and plural, for example, las mujeres, the adjective that you have to use right after the noun has to be feminine and plural as well. For example, las mujeres españolas. It is the same with the articles las, female and plural. We use this article because, as I say, it's female and plural. The third rule I already mentioned before, and be careful, English speakers, because the adjectives in Spanish go after the noun, not before like in English. This is very common for uh, students that learn Spanish and already speak or know English. When I say it, las mujeres españolas, españolas is the adjective, and I put it after las mujeres. In English, it would be a Spanish woman, but not in Spanish. Okay, there are some occasions where the adjectives go before the nouns. That is true, but normally this use comes out at intermediate level or advanced level. So do not worry when you are a beginner. Thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the italki YouTube channel over here. Take a lesson with me on italki.com by clicking on my teacher profile link in the description. Hasta luego. Hi everyone, it's Vicente and I teach Spanish on italki.com 
And today I will be talking about seven Spanish words that are similar to their English counterpart. These words are also known as cognates. What a cognate is? A cognate is a word that has the same linguistic derivation that another word, and it looks similar, and when you pronounce it, it sounds almost the same. And here, I will give you seven cognates, so you can use them in Spanish as well. The first one is alcohol in Spanish. Guess you know what it means, because it sounds pretty similar than in English, doesn't it? Number two is conclusión. This one has a different pronunciation in Spanish, but you will understand definitely when you start learning Spanish. Hola chicos, bienvenidos a mi clase otra vez. Soy Ben Fang. Hello everyone, I'm Ben Fang. Welcome to my class of Mandarin. Chinese one more time, and uh, my name is Ben Fang. Uh, soy profesor de chino y estoy llevo casi diez años uh, enseñando chino mandarín. Uh, I have been teaching Chinese for over ten years. Right now, I'm in a city called Harbin in the northeast of China, next to Mongolia and uh, 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 Russia. And uh, right now, spring is coming, so the weather is perfect. Everything is uh, uh, back to normal once again. Uh, hola, chicos. Uh, estoy en Harbin. No sé si conocéis a mi ciudad. Es en nordeste de China, muy cerca de Rusia y Mongolia. Y ahora, primavera es aquí, así que el tiempo es fenomenal aquí. Uh, si alguien ya está aquí, por favor, dime de dónde eres y tu nombre. Uh, if someone already here, for, feel free to tell me your name, where are you from, and also you can tell me uh, your current level and what your interest is. Uh, si alguien está aquí ya, uh, puedes compartir tu interés. Y también uh, dime qué nivel estáis, eh, tienes. Así que vamos a, uh, luego podemos uh, hablar a algo sobre esto. Um, and for me, personally, I like, I'm a foodie. I like to try a lot of different food. And, it, you know, in China, we have uh, eight categories of food and it depends on the different uh, region and uh, we have uh, a lot of different uh, uh, delicious food. The most famous one that you may see in your country maybe is the Sichuan food, which is the famous for the for the uh, spicy taste there. But now the all the Chinese food are very spicy. For example, uh, in China, uh, in, mi, in mi region northeast uh, northeast china the food are quite uh, salty and it's not spicy at all and i would like to um, share some uh, the f the topic of food and the drinks with you guys later so if you are interested in knowing the food of my region feel free to to ask me anytime Uh, chicos, hoy el tema de la clase es uh, bebida y comida. Uh, no sé si conocéis a comida china. Uh, y en China, en general, tenemos ocho, ocho tipos de, de uh, comidas y depende de uh, zonas diferentes en China. Uh, creo que lo más famoso eh, en todo el mundo es comida de Sichuan. S uh, la comida de Sichuan es muy, muy picante, pero uh, no significa que todas uh, comidas de China son picantes. Por, por ejemplo, mi zona uh, norte de China, 
la comida es, no es dulce, no es picante y es, tiene mucho sabor. Um, y echamos mucho sal y aceite. Así que uh, tiene un, uh, también tiene una influencia de Rusia. Uh, así que en Harbin uh, la comida también es um, muy, muy rico y tiene mucho sabor de, de uh, Rusia. Uh, ¿Alguien ya estáis en, en la aura y podéis compartir la comida de tu país? Uh, dime hola si ya estáis aquí. If someone want, also want to share the food culture or the special drinks in your country, feel free to tell me. I would also like to learn from you guys and to see uh, what food is there or what or there. Like in my in my hometown, Harbin, uh, we also have a lot of uh, influence from from Russia, because in history many uh, Russian experts uh, were living in Harbin, and we have a, a street that. And all the buildings, the construction with the style of the Russian building. And we even have a Russian church in Harbin, in the center of the city. So that's why the food, we also have some influence uh, from the Russian, Russian uh, culture. Uh, we have the restaurant to try the typical Russian soup, the one with tomato and the butter. We also have the sausages, uh, salchichas, uh, which have a very unique and uh, very good taste, uh, which is, uh, you know, for Northeastern Chinese, we like food that's very heavy taste. Uh, we, we put a lot of salt and we put a lot of flavor in the food. That's something we really like. Um, if we... Uh, Anyone want to tell me uh, about your country, the food, the most the typical food? Feel free to tap me in the chat. Uh, I would like to take a look also. Uh, personally, uh, uh, I have been uh, studying Spanish for uh, three years. I'm very interested in learning language and uh, uh, I have many experience in learning foreign language. So uh, today I can both teach in English or in Spanish or in both. Depends on uh, what you guys prefer. If everyone interested in uh, learning Chinese in Spanish, I can use uh, sp uh, Spanish so that we can learn more, more we can cover more contents in my lesson. Uh, no sé si alguien ya estás, está aquí uh, y yo uh, llevo tres años estudiando español, así que yo puedo dar la clase en inglés o en español o ambos. Pero si uh, la mayoría de gente habla en plan uh, español, yo puedo explico la clase en español. Así que uh, podemos aprender mucho en una hora. Um, así que depende de vosotros. Vamos a esperar um, dos minutos más. Si no hay gente viene, vamos a empezar. We will just wait for two more minutes if uh, there are just to see if there are new friends are coming, and we will start. Uh, our class in two minutes. Perfect. Uh, and uh, why I'm learning Spanish, many people have asked me. Uh, uh, that was a long story. Uh, I, uh, you know, in Northeast China, my hometown is super, super uh, cold in winter. It can be as as cold as 40 degrees in winter. So uh, when I chose to, when I had the opportunity to study abroad, uh, all I was thinking about is to go to a place that uh, it's more warm and uh, no winter. So I chose, chose Miami of United States 
and uh, I started a master degree there. But I thought before I went to uh, United States, before I went to Miami, uh, I thought that um, mm, United States must be like China. Every people are look the same, they speak the same language. But however, uh, I found out that only the teachers and the students are speaking English, and almost everyone in Miami are sp or speak are speaking uh, Spanish. So, <laughs> so even when I went to supermarket, they tell the price in Spanish. It's really it feels like I went to a a completely new uh, new country, and I don't know the language there. So that was the first time it aroused my interest to learn Spanish. And after I came back from China, uh, I just uh, kept starting it and I found it's very uh, interesting to learn the culture and the, that language. And, uh, and today I can speak not good, not perfect Spanish, but I can communicate without problem. Uh, ahora voy a explicar mi historia con español uh, y uh, mucha gente mm, piensa que por qué este chico, este chico chino habla español. Es que yo vivo en una ciudad muy, muy norte de China y en invierno oh, eh, 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 la temperatura puede ser uh, 30 y 40 uh, grados menos. Así que hace mucho, mucho frío en invierno. Y cuando uh, durante el tiempo que uh, el, uh, puedo el, elegir uh, la universidad, uh, yo pensaba que ah, uh, seguro quiero uh, ir a un, una ciudad mm, que no... Uh, que, Uh, es más, no hay invierno y uh, es más cómodo. Así que uh, he elegido Miami uh, de Estados Unidos. Pero en Miami solo la gente en la universidad uh, habla en español y en las tiendas, supermercados, en la calle, no hay nadie a, habla inglés. Uh, así que es mi primera la razón para empezar mi ruta de aprender español es para mm, puedo podía comunicar con la gente uh, y ahora ahora cuando uh, vuelvo a China yo seguía uh, aprendiendo este idioma y estoy muy muy interesado y esta lengua y también la cultura de Latinoamérica y también de España. Así que también uh, llevo tres años viviendo en Madrid y uh, es como mi segunda familia. Me, me encanta mucho. Uh, ok, so that's my story. Uh, let's see if someone already here. Feel free to say hi if someone is here. Ah. Ah. Vale, chicos, vamos a empezar uh, la clase de hoy. Uh, so we are going to start the class right now. And uh, again, uh, today we are going to learn about the food and the drinks. Hoy vamos a aprender el tema de la comida y bebida. Um, Uh, ahora voy a compartir mi uh, pantalla. Right now, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you for your help. Ok, so vamos a ver, vamos a empezar. Uh, chicos, uh, mm, cuando estudiamos un idioma, lo... Uh, Chino mandarín, la gramática es bastante muy, muy fácil. Uh, así que um, el orden de la, de la frase es más, más fundamental. Y siempre eh, para pregunta, para una frase normal, siempre empezamos con el sujeto. 
Uh, así que uh, aquí tenemos que aprender cómo se dice la gente en una frase. Uh, okay, everyone. Uh, today we are going to learn uh, some uh, basic knowledge of Chinese. Uh, the grammar uh, is very simple of the Chinese language. So that's why it's very strict to learn the order of uh, Chinese. Since the grammar is easy, we have to strictly follow the right order in order to convey, uh, to communicate effectively with, uh, with the listener. Therefore, uh, in Chinese, no matter if it is a question or it's a statement, we always put a subject in the beginning of the sentence. So here we are going to see some uh, pronouns, some uh, very important subjects that we can use uh, in every sentence. Remember, always start the sentence with uh, your subject. Perfect. So uh, uh, in the beginning for you in Chinese, it's Ni, ni. Many of you have heard that uh, hello is uh, ni hao, ni hao. Therefore, ni is you, and hao means good. Uh, so, you good in Chinese is means hello, uh, hello. So, ni ah uh, is you, you. And for I, it's wo, wo. hao. We start with a perfect circle of your lip and then relax. And the tone mark tells you to do a curve here. So together it's And for he or she uh, in Chinese, it's ta ta. We have a char two characters for one for he, one for she, but for the pronunciation, uh, this this uh, T A with the tone mark, we call it the pin. Pin is the phonetic system to pronounce the characters. So the pin for both he and the she, and the same, the pronunciation is the same. Uh, uh, it's ta ta. 非常好,非常好啊. Uh, so one more time, you, 你, 你, uh, I, 我, 我, he or she, 他, 他, 非常好,非常好. Ahora voy a explicar in uh, español. Uh, in chino, um, muchos, mucha gente ya uh, sa sabéis que uh, para hola es ni hao, ni hao. Ni significa du, du, ni, ni, fenomenal, uh, ni. And hao significa bien, bueno, du estás bien. Es hola en chino mandarín, uh, ni, ni. Y yo en chino es 我, 我, genial. Empezamos con un labio pequeño y luego más relajado. 我, 我, 非常好, 我. Y para él, él y ella, uh, tenemos dos caracteres, una para él y otra para ella, pero um, en sonido. Uh, uh, cuál es pin, uh, cuál es el nombre para el sistema de pronunciación, uh, es uh, como se escribe como así. Y es lo mismo para él y ella, cuál es ta, ta, genial. Uh, el torno es pleno, muy alto, ta, ta, muy bien, otra vez. Ni, ni, wo, wo, ta, ta, 
genial. Y, uh, and in Chinese, if we put men, men after ni, wo, ta, and the men makes the people concept from singular to plural. So you plus men, ni men, uh, that means you guys, ni men, ni men. And if I put men after I, wo, so that will be means we, right? So we is woman, woman, 非常好. And he or she plus men, uh, which means they, uh, they, 他们, 他们, perfect. So you guys, 你们, 我们, we. And Taman, Taman, them, they, fit uh, 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 son singulares. Si añadimos uh, men después de do, yo y el o ella, va de, va, vamos a tener um, la forma plural de la gente. Así que uh, ni men significa vosotros, vosotros, woman, uh, nosotros, nosotros, tamen, tamen, ayus, ayus. Genial, genial. Uh, así que son todos sujetos uh, uh, fundamental, básicas para uh, empezar una frase. Therefore, here are all the pronouns and the subjects which are very, very useful for us to start a sentence. So whenever you want to make a question or a statement, always use one of the uh, six here. Uh, and the topic today is for food and drinks. So now we are coming to learn now since we already know the subjects and we need to learn the verb and the object to form a complete sentence so the very first the sub uh, verb that we are going to learn is to drink uh, to drink it's very good uh, so this this e here uh, has a sound of uh, uh, 非常好, very good. So this sound, unlike English, there are no a sound, no e sound. This one, ah, uh, it feels like a little bit from the back of your throat. Uh, uh, and the H uh, has some air pump out. And the tone mark is very high. It indicates you have to keep it flat. Do not go up, do not go down, and you keep it a flight. So all together for drink is he, he, 非常好. Again, once again, he, he, perfect. That's it. Uh, chicos, ya sabemos los sujetos, así que para uh, tener, formar, crear una frase con todas partes, uh, ya sabemos los sujetos. Ahora tenemos que aprender los verbos y los objetos. Así que el verbo primero vamos a aprender es para beber, beber. Beber en chino mandarín es como así. He, he. H uh, tiene un poco aire. He, 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 he. Y la final, E, en este no tiene uh, sonido de inglés ni español. Es un sonido muy uh, nuevo. Es como de, de, desde aquí. Uh, Uh, así que juntos con el primero torno a uh, juntos es g, g. Así que yo bebo, bebo es 
，我喝，我喝，嘿尼啊，我喝。You do babies， 你喝，你喝。Y sabes recordáis cómo se dice él o ella bebe？ 嘿尼啊。Empezamos siempre con el sujeto. Ta, he, ta, he. Genial.、Uh, so now, uh, uh, let's review that earlier. We learned the subjects for I. It's 我我 So I drink something will be 我喝我喝 You drink something. Start always with you. 你 to drink. 喝你喝 He or she drinks will be. 他喝他喝非常好非常好 So there's no uh 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 the verbs uh conjugations in Chinese. You just learn the verb for one time. That's okay for all the subjects. It's super easy. The grammar you just learn it one time. That's it.、Uh, no matter the subject is plural or singular, you just use the verb after the subjects, and you can express the form the sentence as you wish. For example, ah,、uh, you guys drink, 你们喝 and we drink, 我们喝 they drink, 他们喝 All the same, ah,、uh, 非常好 Um, una cosa muy muy buena de chino es que no hay verbo conjugaciones, así que el verbo solo solo aprendéis una vez y podéis usar en todo todo situaciones. Por ejemplo, ah,、uh, bebemos, 我们喝 el verbo sigue. Lo mismo. Ah, vosotros bebéis. Ni men he, ni men he. Y ellos beben. Tamen he, tamen he. Así que la gramática es muy muy fácil. Lo más importante es、mm, siempre ah、uh, sigue el orden correcto. Ah,、uh, así que no. Uh, cometemos、uh, errores. Genial.、Uh. Eh, y ahora vamos a ver、uh, unos bebidas. Uh, uh, al principio, coffee, café, muy muy fácil.、Uh, es el mismo sonido. Café, café. El tono sigue pleno y muy alto de tu voz. Café, café, genial. Así que yo bebo café. Yo he café. Yo he café. Genial. As I mentioned, the grammar is super easy, so we just need to strictly follow the order: subject, verb, and object. The first object is、uh, just the sound translation from the English word "coffee." Ah,、uh, so it's "café, café." I drink coffee. Will be, 我喝咖啡，我喝咖啡，非常好 ，very good. Ah,、uh, and the tea in Chinese. Ah,、uh, it's the、uh, it's 茶。茶，非常好啊。C H has a lot of air ah、uh, pump out from your mouth. So for example, the word church, the second C H has a lot of air. Ch, ch, and、uh, we can see the tone mark on top of ah、uh, is tells you start lower and then you make a rise. Ah,、uh, so ah、uh, the this tone mark. Actually, gives you a direction to lead you your voice from a lower pitch to a higher pitch. So this one for tea in Chinese is 茶茶 
is a happy tone, right? Uh, or think about you are making a question. Ah, uh, it's like mm, what, what? So this tone is about some doubt you have. Ah, uh, so one more time, T in Chinese, cha, cha, 非常好 cha, very good. And how to say I drink tea? 我喝茶，我喝茶 ，perfect. That's how we say I drink tea. Yeah. And yes, and um, chicos, ah,、uh, they in Chino as cha, cha. Um. A tiene、uh, un torno segundo、uh, encima.、Uh, el torno、uh, actualmente、uh, da da un vista que dice que nosotros los voz tenemos que、uh, empezar muy bajo y luego a arriba.、Eh, también yo、mm, llamo este torno、uh, como torno、uh, de contendo es que es como hacemos una pregunta qué qué、ah, eh, o muy contendo qué qué así que、eh, este este torno、uh, siempre empezamos muy bajo y luego muy alto así que cha cha fenomenal cha y、uh, ch tiene mucha aire ch 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 cha cha otra vez como decimos yo bebo bebo café genial siempre lleva sujeto ah、uh, 我喝茶我喝茶 fenomenal muy bien y cerveza cerveza en chino es Pijo, pijo, genial, mucha mucha aire. Ah,、uh, pi, pi, otra vez con tono segundo, pi. Y alcohol es jiu, 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 genial, con boca ancho primero y luego más más estrecho. Pijo, pijo, muy bien. Ah, así que yo bebo cerveza. Yo bebo pijo. Yo bebo pijo. Fenomenal. Ah, and for beer in Chinese is pijo, pijo. Very good. Ah. And I drink beer. Ah,、uh, in Chinese will be, 我喝啤酒。啤 with the second tone one more time. So start lower in order to make a rise. 啤啤 And J the J sound. J ah,、uh, we do a cheese mouth in the beginning, and then with the the final I U sound like U. Together it's 酒 Jiu, pijiu, pijiu, perfect. So I drink beer. 我喝啤酒 And we can see also for milk. Milk also have the same final i u, which have the u sound ah in it. So with the initial n together, will be new, new. Ah, so one more time with the ah、uh, initial n. And the final u with the tone two, new, new, and milk, nai, nai, the cow milk, which ah、uh, new means the cow, and nai is the milk. Together is the、uh, formal way to say milk,、uh, the complete way to say milk, new nai, new nai. Therefore, I drink milk will be, 我喝。牛奶，我喝牛奶 ，perfect， 非常好。啊、uh, ，chicos， 啊、uh, ，la por lo último tenemos 啊、uh, leche， la leche también tiene la final de i 
U juntos tiene una uh, pronunciación de U, U. Así que N más U es new, new. Y luego nae, nae. La leche, new nae, new nae. Bebo leche, wo he new nae, wo he new nae. Fenomenal. Eh, y chicos, recordáis que uh, he dicho que la orden de pregunta y la frase normal son mismos. Así que si queremos hacer una pregunta sí o no, que tiene respuesta de sí o no, siempre le añadimos ma al final de la frase. Así que, ¿bebes café? Sí o no, en chino mandarín es ni he uh, ni nai ma. Ni he ni nai ma. Genial. Es igual el orden. Uh, guys, I have mentioned that in Chinese, the order of the question and the statement are the same, are the same. Always we start the sentence with the subject, then verb, object, and for question is the same. So for example, if we want to make a yes or no question, uh, uh, like with the answer of yes or no, for example, do you like China? Yes, I like. Are you a student? Yes, I am. Or no, I'm not. Those of type of questions, we just add ma, ma, the question particle ma, in the end of the sentence, and you can make a yes or no question. Therefore, uh, if I want to ask, do you drink coffee? I can say, you drink coffee? Yes or no, with the ma in the end. The order is the same. It's the same. Uh, therefore, let's make a try. Uh, you drink coffee? Yes or no? Do you drink coffee? Ni he cafe ma. Ni he cafe ma. Perfect. Simple as that. And how do we say, does he drink coffee? We just replace the ni to he or she ta right? To start the sentence with ta. Therefore, ta he cafe ma. Ta he cafe ma. Perfect. Uh, he drinks coffee, yes or no? That's the order to make a yes or no question. Perfect. Y chicos, um, ta he cafe ma. Igual, si? ¿sí? Él o ella bebe café, sí o no. Así que es lo mismo orden como, como uh, bebes café, ¿sí? Muy bien. Uh, ahora vamos a aprender otro, otro verbo. Uh, ¿Cuál es? Querer. Querer. Querer es yao. Yao. Genial. Yao. Así que yo quiero cerveza, ah, lo mismo orden. Wo yao pi jiu. Wo yao pi jiu. Quiero cerveza. Uh, guys, now we are going to learn another verb rather than to drink. Uh, here we are going to learn to want. To want in Chinese is yao. Yao. The Y sounds like the E and AO is ao, ao. So together with the tone four, the angry tone, which is yao, yao. So when I want something, it's a affirmative tone. Uh, it's uh, demanding. So therefore, I want is wo yao, wo yao. And the beer we have learned is pi jiu. Pijiu. So I want beer will be Wo Yao Pijiu. Wo Yao Pijiu. Do you want beer? How do you say that? 
do you want? The answer is yes, I want, or no, I don't want. That's a yes or no question, right? So we just say, we just put my in the end and we replace you to, uh, replace I to you to make that question. 你要啤酒吗? 你要啤酒吗? Perfect. That's how we make a question of do you want something? And now we are going to learn a new question word, uh, which is what, what. So what is now the, when you answer the what question, you have to say the object that you want, right? You don't say yes or no. So we don't use ma anymore. Instead, we use uh, the what question to replace the object. And we have to keep the same order. Same order with the subject, verb, object. Now the object, is, the beer is missing, and we have to put what to replace that object. So what in Chinese is 什么? 什么? Uh, it's not M-A anymore. Uh, this is M-E. 什么? 什么? Perfect. So what do you want? In English order, we say what you want. But in Chinese, no, 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 no. In Chinese, always the same order, subject, verb, object. 你要什么? 你要什么? Perfect. That's the right order for what do you want. Uh, what do you want? 你要什么? Perfect. Uh, okay, so uh, guys, we have learned that uh, I want beer is 我要啤酒. And can you guys think how to say do? Ah, uh, uh, lo siento, uh, tengo que explicar en español. Ya uh, hemos estudiado que yo quiero cerveza es 我要啤酒. Y como, um, como, dice, como se dice, uh, ¿quieres cerveza, sí o no? Genial. Con sí o no pregunta, siempre ponemos ma al final de la frase. Uh, ¿Ni yao pijo ma? ¿Ni yao pijo ma? Muy bien. Así que es uh, la manera para decir ¿Quieres cerveza, sí o no? El mismo orden. Y ahora vamos a aprender una pregunta, la palabra para la pregunta de qué, a ah, qué. Y otra vez tenemos que seguir la misma orden, ah, el sujeto, verbo y objeto. Así que ahora el objeto ya no, no sabemos, uh, así que tenemos que poner que en uh, el mismo lugar en la frase. En español decimos qué quieres, qué quieres, y ponemos que en el principio de la frase. Pero en chino, no, 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 no. Uh, en chino siempre seguimos la misma orden. Y ponemos que al final de la frase. Uh, como aquí. Ni yao shema. Ni yao shema. Y uh, aquí no es ma porque no es una pregunta de sí o no. Y uh, ahora es pregunta de qué. Así que no necesitamos ma. Pero en lugar para que en chino con dos, dos pin, ¿cuál es? Shema, shema, para mostrar el significado de que, que. Así que, ¿qué quieres? Ni yao, shema, ni yao, shema. Fenomenal, fidajo. Y ahora vamos a mover a la siguiente. Ah, ¿Qué quieres beber? Ah, ¿Qué quieres beber? El mismo orden, mismo orden. Do, querer, beber, ¿qué? 
你要喝什么？你要喝什么？Y para responder a esta pregunta, lo mismo orden. Yo quiero beber más、mm, una bebida de los cuatro. Yo quiero beber café. Yo quiero beber café. Yo quiero beber té. Yo quiero tomar té. Yo quiero beber café. Yo quiero beber café. Yo quiero beber cerveza. Yo quiero beber pizza. Yo quiero beber pizza. Yo quiero beber la leche. Yo quiero beber nuna. Yo quiero beber nuna. Very good, guys. And we have learned that、uh, we have to、uh, follow the strict order. Subject, verb, object, and we have learned two verbs: 要 to want and to drink. 喝 and the question for what? 什么什么 So what? How do you how do you translate the sentence that in front of you? 你要喝什么你要喝什么 Perfect. That means. You want to drink what? Ah,、uh, in English order, what do you want to drink? But in Chinese order, you want to drink what? Perfect. Always, always the same order. And you can see that to answer the question, same order. And now we just replace the 什么 with one of the drinks here. I would like to drink coffee. 我要喝咖啡 I want to drink tea. 我要喝茶 I want to drink beer. 我要喝啤酒 I want to drink milk. 我要喝牛奶 It's very easy, right? So just、um, in the beginning, you just learn the order, and the, in the end, it's just like a puzzle. You just、um, learn new word, and you can form your sentence. You have the formula of the mathematics.、Uh, what you have to do is to put the puzzle pieces in that formula, and you get the sentence you want. Perfect.、Uh, now let's move.、Uh, I don't know if anyone of you have any question. Let me take a quick look to see if someone is commenting something. Solo voy a echar una pista, vale. Ahora vamos a avanzar con el siguiente. Y、um, vale. Y otro verbo para para comer. Ya sabemos beber las bebidas y para comer es chu chu fenomenal. Ch, ch, y no hay no hay sonido. Solo pronunciamos c y h. Ch, ch, genial. Y fruta, fruta es shuiguo, shuiguo. Hay dos sonidos de Tercer torno, así que es muy largo para pronunciar todos. Aquí Shui, en realidad damos tono segundo. Shui Guo, Shui Guo. Comer fruta, Chi Shui Guo, Chi Shui Guo. Genial. Y、um, Niuro. Nuro para la carne. Nuro, nuro. En y comida china, ah,、uh, china. En español es, ah,、uh, en chino es. Zhongguo, Zhongguo. Y los platos, platos es. Cai, cai. Así que comida de China es. Zhongguo. 
菜啊 ，mucha aile， 菜，中国菜 ，perfecto。Y por el último 啊，呃 ，arroz arroz es mi fan， mi fan。Así que comer arroz, comer mi fan, comer mi fan, comer comida china, comer chino, comer chino, comer carne, comer niu ro, comer niu ro, perfecto. So now, since we already know the structure of the sentence, the order, and now time to learn a new verb. Uh, to 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 drink is a he, and to eat in Chinese it's chi chi. The e is silent. Uh, when e after ch, e has no pronunciation, no sound, and we gave the we keep the tone. Ah.、Uh, In this case, it's point one. So, ch, ch for to eat, ch. And fruit in Chinese is here, 水果水果 Two circles together is a little bit too long to pronounce. Ah,、uh, since circle is usually longer than the other three tones. So therefore, when two third tones are together, the first the third tone we will change to the second tone. Ah,、uh, so in real life, although it's written on the dictionary is a shui gu, in Chinese we change to the second tone. The one goes up and then the third tone to make it sounds faster. Ah,、uh, shui gu, shui gu, perfect. So to eat fruit, chi shui gu. 吃水果 ，very good， 非常好。And beef, ah,、uh, in Chinese is 牛肉，牛肉。Early we learned the leche, the、uh, milk is 牛奶，牛奶。So 牛啊、uh, is the animal for the cow, and the roe is the meat. So the meat of the cow is beef, 牛肉，牛肉。非常好，牛肉，就、so, 吃牛肉，吃牛肉。And to ah、uh, here for Chinese food ah,、uh, um, we put the China before the food ah.、Uh, China in Chinese is 中国，中国，中 means middle， 国 means country。So the Middle Kingdom, ah,、uh, the Asian name, ah,、uh, it's Zhongguo, ah,、uh, China, Zhongguo. And cai, cai is the dishes. You know, in China, we order the food in the plates.、Uh, we order many food in the restaurant. Each plate of the food, that's one of the dish, which is cai, cai. So the dishes from China is the Chinese food. 中国菜，中国菜。To eat Chinese food will be 吃中国菜，吃中国菜。Very good. Ah,、uh, the the C has a lot of air pumped out. It sounds like the T S sound, but a lot, a lot strong air pumped out. 菜，菜，中国菜。Perfect. 中国菜。And the last one, the cooked rice, cooked white rice in Chinese is 米饭，米饭 ，perfect， 米饭啊。呃、uh, so ，to eat rice will be 吃米饭，吃米饭 ，perfect. So, quick question for you guys: How to say um Do you eat fruit? As a yes or no question. Una pregunta rápida: ¿Cómo decís que、um, comes fruta? Comes fruta es un es un sí o no pregunta. Ah, pen, pen, pensáis un poco.、Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, ya sabéis, genial, es ni uh, empezamos con la persona ni ma ni ma you guys already heard do you eat fruit we use the ma one more time in the end right start the sentence with you so ni ma do you eat fruit and how to say what do you eat uh, now let's change the question to what do you eat how do you say y ahora vamos a pensar cómo se dice qué comes qué comes ya no es sí o no la cuenta es oh, qué comes very good the same order right the same order we start with you and then the verb eat and the, the question of what shema shema so all together will be ni chi shema ni chi shema muy bien muy bien eso es como uh, hablamos la frase que comes el mismo orden do comes que ni chi shema ni chi shema muy bien no hay más oh, genial and, y tenemos cinco minutos más que lo uh, presentar o oh, la última verbo ah, muy útil es para expresar de gusta o no de gusta así que para gustar es si juan si juan uh, si, si te gusta siempre le son sonríe mucho sí con labios muy ancho si sí, juan si sí, juan así que yo me gusta comida china es o si sí, juan chungua tai o si sí, juan chungua tai genial Ah, uh, y para la última, ¿cómo, cómo se dice? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué te gusta? ¿Qué prefieres? Uh, lo mismo orden. Ni si Juan Shema. Ni si Juan Shema. Perfecto, fenomenal. Guys, the last verb we are going to learn today is to like. It's very practical word for you to express what you like, to tell what you like and you don't like. When you like something, you can always use this verb. Xi huan. Xi huan. Uh, when you like something, always we uh, smile and uh, therefore the mouth is very uh, wide. And xi, xi, and then later huan, huan. Si Juan, si Juan, to tell like. So I like, wo si Juan. I like Chinese food. Wo si Juan, Zhong Guo Cai. Wo si Juan, Zhong Guo Cai. Fi Zhang Hao, Fi Zhang Hao. Ah. And if you want to tell what do you like, we early we learn what is shen ma, shen ma. Same order. You like what? That means what do you like? Ni si huan shema. Ni si huan shema. Oh. And if you ask for yes or no question, do you like Chinese food? We just add ma in the end of the sentence, right? Do you like Chinese food? Ni si huan zhong guo cai ma? Ni si huan zhong guo cai ma. Therefore, the main structure, uh, as we learned today, the subject, verb, object. Remember the question order, the statement order are the same. Uh, basicamente, el orden, uh, 
que hemos aprendido hoy es a la eh, orden de sujeto, verbo y objeto. Si seguimos este orden sin problema para crear tu propio, propia frase. Uh, thank you guys for uh, coming and uh, participating in today's class. I hope you guys enjoy today's class. And uh, please, please uh, uh, follow the page of italki and for future uh, Chinese classes on, uh, live on the italki platform. Or you can find me on my teacher's profile page on italki. And anyway, I'm uh, really happy today to be here to share you some uh, Chinese knowledge. I hope you are you learned something, and hope to see you soon in class. Uh, hola chicos, bienvenidos a mi clase otra vez. Espero que habéis aprendido mucho, mucho uh, en mi clase. Y uh, por favor, seguís la página de Italki. Y en Italki siempre hay uh, más clases interesantes de chino mandarín o de otros idiomas. Y también puedes encontrarme en la página de Italki de mi uh, perfil de, uh, y puedes reservar clase conmigo. Uh, muchas gracias por venir otra vez. Que tengáis un día fenomenal. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, I hope you guys having a wonderful day today. And 再见. See you soon.